Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, Rich. Richard Mulder, how are you, buddy? I'm doing good, man. Yeah? I'm just trying to adjust to, um, I feel like an astronaut with these... <laughs> 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 with these headphones it's on It's actually right now. weird because I never even think about it now. I hear you. Yeah, it just feels <laughs> kind of funny, but... Uh, so what's going on? It's funny you ask that because really uh, just life. Life, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get into all yeah. this because, listen, man, you gotta... We'll go over your life, you okay. know, and, and skateboarding and everything, but you got a couple cool things going on right now. You yeah. Know, we got some Nike uh, re-release shoes no, that was nice that they did that. Yeah, uh, and yeah. then uh, Chocolate did a is doing a uh, co uh, a re-release of the old graphic. Yeah, a reissue was of that, the board. Which board did they re? Your first board? No, your you oh, know it was the Holy Water board. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's a board. Uh, oh, yeah. It's actually a board that Active Active chose. It's going to be an ex okay. ex, 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 exclusive. Sick. Through all the Active stores, like a reissue board. So perfect. They chose the graphic, which I'm stoked on. So it's cool. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, that was kind of the iconic. I don't know. That's uh, yeah, that's pretty well known. Board. It's well known. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I, I think yeah. so, man. Yeah. I, I really, I think all of Evans so serious. Yeah. I mean, for sure, all yeah. of the series. For I was sure. talking about that today at Girl. I was like, when you, you could see a chocolate board from a far away, right. and then even throughout the years, people know like you know his series of boards, the city series, and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Do you so have like, any? Did you keep all your old boards and stuff? You know what? I actually have. Uh, yeah, for the for the most part, I think I have like seventy okay. percent of my 70 boards. Per, that's a good percentage. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to get a hundred percent. I mean, unless you're like due diligent, you know, Jamie Thomas. Right. Yeah. Jamie, right. Yeah. Jamie Thomas ish. And then, um, no, I think I have like maybe one series. Okay. This yeah. one series. Do you remember uh, it was like the all white boards and they had like the different color squares? Yes. Yes. I think mine was like some matches with like a cigarette yeah. butt. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's an odd series though because the other series, like the bar room series yeah, yeah. in the city, like they all connect, you right. know? You, but the thing about uh, with the board with Active too is that you were, you were on Active for like Ever. I was like, remember, you were on it since the beginning. Yeah, I think I was on Active, got on like around in 95. Oh, wow. Like they were wow. still like, 95, 96, they were still like mom and pop store. Mm -hmm. They had three stores out in the Inland Empire, one in Rancho Cucamonga, one in Chino, one in San Dimas. And it was obviously way before what they are today. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, I think they were selling sweats. Oh, yeah? <laughs> sweats and skateboards and right. some, like some surf stuff. And then they really helped you know, grow the skateboarding scene out in the Inland Empire. So yeah. Yeah, I could appreciate it. And so I could appreciate, you know, just having yeah. that reissue, them wanting to have a reissue. Yeah. Right. It all, it all makes sense. As yeah. long as they know that this is not like a, a some comeback board. <laughs> like, hey, this is a reissue. This is just like, you know, if you guys want right. to celebrate a time and era, that's cool. Yeah. But right. no one's doing any front side crooked grinds anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> no front crook, no Why not? Crook, no, nothing. no, it's just... I mean, dude, let's save the this good might, skating. This, There's so many good skaters out there right now. This, it's like... This might I, spark something. Spark what? A real comeback. <laughs> no, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> you know what? If, if anything, it's uh, it feels good that they want... That Active and Chocolate wanted to do this. That yeah. feels great. But no, I mean, I like going to Thrasher and watching good skateboarding. Yeah, okay. And, you know, I just feel like... I just really thankful for the time that i was in skateboarding skateboarding we'll get into all that okay you know? we'll go we'll get into all that but you're from uh like rancho area like uh, fontana mm -hmm. what san dimas or something what are, where yeah are you? so i was born in west covina west covina that's okay. where i think vince is from vincent alvarez yeah, yeah yeah and then uh queen of the valley hospital Ooh. so for those of you guys that know west covina is like 20 minutes from downtown East. It sounds far, but it's it actually does. not really that it's far. Funny, think about like, it. It's funny because like minutes from downtown. No, it's funny because I remember when Gino would drive out to Chafee, just on the way, he'd like, man, Chafee's by the mountains. Yeah, and that's how he would kind of, you know, describe going that way. Yeah, and I right. get that. It's inland, right? What is yeah. it like seventy miles, maybe? No. Yeah, it ha I mean, Covina or Chafee to Chafee? Yeah. No, from Venice. Yeah, it's Chafee's well, about, about sixty miles, fifty miles. Okay, because Huntington Beach is about what fifty. No. 40 miles? 40, 40 miles? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, maybe, th yeah, like 40 miles? You know what's yeah. weird? Growing up skateboarding and yeah. then also working in real estate, oh, I'm yeah. just driving so much. Right. I don't really, I, I can't, 
I'm just used to that. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, 30, like 40 miles is 20 miles. 40 minutes is yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. You always, we always judge things by time, I feel like. Right. Here. right. Not like how many miles away. Because yeah. yeah. it could be five miles away and take you two hours to get there. Yeah. So grew up in San Dimas. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then uh, at the age of 10, like moved out to Fontana, which is basically now you're really inland. Cause yeah. San Dimas is SGV San Gabriel Valley. Okay. You're not Inland Empire yet. You're still in LA County. Right. But once you cross from Claremont into Montclair, you're in San Bernardino County. Now you're inland, officially Inland Empire. IE. Right. Yeah. Right. And I mean, where I grew up, South Fontana, was very like, I mean, it's going from like San Dimas was more like suburbia to I grew up in an underdeveloped. Okay. White trash. Uh, Just desert. Like desert. Like town with no sidewalks. Right. Like it's right. Wow. <laughs> Fontana was rugged, but um, it was still good. I mean, there was a lot of good, good skateboarders, good, good skateboarding scene. Actually, the skateboarding scene in Fontana was thriving more than the skateboarding scene in uh, San Dimas at the time. At least when I started. Did you start around ten years old? Is that I when started you... around ten years old? Yeah. Yeah. What was your first board? So my fr- yeah, I remember. I do remember because I sacrificed a bunch of GI Joes for it. Oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, <laughs> fully. Like I was really into GI Joes. I mean, grew up in a military family. Oh, okay. And so yeah, loved GI Joes, Snake yeah. Eyes. Oh yeah, Snake. Like yeah. uh, <laughs> GI Jane, Shipwreck, the whole kit. Right, wow. I had everything. The Hubcraft, the headquarters, and there. Um, I was just at a park. Me and my friend was at a park. Me and my neighbor. Okay. And then uh. Uh, Tom Krauser. You guys know who Tom mm-hmm. Krauser? Is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tom Krauser, he was already skateboarding at the time. Me and him went to the same elementary school. Interesting. And so he rolls through, and I see him do an Ollie. And this is the first time I've ever seen anyone do an Ollie in my whole entire life. And uh-huh. it looked like magic. Like he basically made his skateboard go up, right? He had stick no glue, feet. stick to his feet. And right. I was like, oh. So <laughs> when I saw that, I was kind of tripping. I was like, man, that, I want to do that. I yeah. want to try that or I want to ride that. And then uh, another time I was walking home from school and these guys were like launching, like launch ramp, right? Okay. And it was at this park and this really long sidewalk and they were going really fast and boom, Tom busts like this fat method. And I was like, whoa. And then from that part on, I was just like, I want to skate. So yeah. um, my first board I stole Oh, you stole it? I stole my first board. Where did you steal it from? <laughs> I stole it from my friend's older brother. Okay. He had this kamikaze. Like, it was a cheap kamikaze, uh-huh. right? He wasn't taking care of it. No. And so uh, I stole it, and I fessed up. Hey, I stole this board, right? Wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what did I, they... I spray painted it pink, the whole thing pink. Oh, you did? Even the grip tape? Everything. Yeah, I was, you're 10 years old. Yeah. didn't know what you're doing. And then my dad sawed it in half because I wasn't wearing a helmet. Like my dad was like, oh, yeah. Damn. So then my, but that wasn't a real, like that wasn't a real skateboard. It was a kamikaze, right? Okay. And then uh, there was like back in 87, mm-hmm. like skate shops were like half bike shops, right? You yeah. remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so there was a, a, a bike shop in Covina called, oh, Covina Glendora called uh, Jurgen's Bike Shop. Uh-huh. And uh, there was this kid, I forget his name, but um, he was in the GI Joes too. So we were friends and he had like two boards. And he's like, hey, I'll give you my, my Steve Steadham Sure Grip International, right? Complete. Complete. But the fact that it was pro model, like had pro trucks, pro yeah, wheels, no. he's like, I want your whole kit. I want everything. <laughs> All the G.I. Joe's. Everything, yeah. So I gave him everything and I had an actual, like a board. And you felt the difference, right? Like NMB yeah. bearings, right. real trucks, like real grip tape. I mean, that's a lot to give up your whole collection of G.I. Joe's. Ghost. Gone. Wow. Gone. Gone. And, um, you know, from there, it was so worth it, though, because skating yeah. was obviously the best thing on earth. Yeah. Right? Was that easy for wow. you to give up? Yeah, fully. Uh, yeah. I <laughs> mean, because you're, you're you know, you're, you're going from, like, little kid to kid to, right. like, it's like when, you, when, you, when you're interested in something, right? Have you like, ever gone online trying to, like, buy up G.I. Joe's again? No. I, I'm back? Actually, once I let that go, like, it's gone. Care. I don't yeah. even care about right. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't, I haven't watched the movie. Like, I don't look at reissues. I don't even care. <laughs> I just cut that loss right there. I mean, Kelly still watches Lego movies and stuff. Dude, they make some know? funny ass shit, those G.I. Joe shows. <laughs> I watch all the Lego movies, too. I have three, three, I have three boys. And then how, how old are your boys? I have an eight-year-old, I have a six-year-old, and I have a two-and-a-half-year-old. But, I mean, eight years old, are any of them interested in skateboarding? My, my eight-year-old, he's into whatever he's into at the moment. Okay. Like, if he wants to skate, like, he has a board, Yeah. he could skate. Bike. 
bike. G.I. Joe. Is right he now, G.I. Joe's? Right no. now he's into like uh, just super ill Nerf guns right now. Oh, right? Really? Like, oh. <laughs> he's into just having an ill arsenal of Nerf weapons. Okay. That they, he just plays with his friends. Yeah. But then like if there's a ramp, like he knows how to pump now. But I'm not trying to like, I started at 10 and I see some of these little kids slam nowadays. Oh God. And I'm like, hey, you know, whenever you want to get to skating, cool. Like I'm in no, I'm not like this trying to live vicariously through my kids. For right? sure. Like, yeah. For sure. For if sure. he, even if he never skates, I care less. Yeah. You know. Plus I feel like they follow their friends or whatever, they're, whatever they're, the whole group's doing. Like if Christian, Christian Asoy's kids oh. come, come over then he they want to my kid wants to skate oh, right okay but if like my kid's watching me watch a soccer game then he's like let's play soccer okay like he just played he just got done playing soccer because he knows i like soccer oh who's your team manchester united oh there you go yeah man you, you follow soccer i love it what are you serious no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> but i know i know a lot of the teams though you know mm. oops I don't know why my phone What's does that? that. Siri will just come on like randomly oh, really? on my phone. <laughs> I think I need to update it. Yeah, yeah. she like come yeah, on. Get an update. What yeah. is that, the iPhone 8? No, it's I think the 7. Oh. I really don't know. It's funny. You get to this age like... You don't really care anymore. Where you, you just... Yeah, you don't care anymore. No yeah. 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 You just don't, you don't I, care. I used, to, I used to wait in line Yeah. for the app for the new iPhone. Yeah. Now I'm just like, I just want a phone that works. Right, and you drop you them know? so many times, you're like... Yeah. Yeah, it's, I don't yeah. care. So you skated for the skate shop. Uh, what was the name of the shop? Jergens. Um, Jergens. Yeah, Jergens. I oh. can't believe I remembered that. That's Kelly's favorite somewhere. lotion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm probably not happy with me actually. Yeah. But, yeah. but Sorry, so the, the so the skate shop was named Jergens, and yeah. that was a local shop that you frequented. Yeah, like when I lived in Sandy Miss, right when I started skating, like uh -huh. I think right when I learned how to ollie up a curb. Okay. My dad decided uh, we're gonna move to Fontana. Right. And that's, again, that was like, it's like night and day realities of living. But we live, they, we bought a, we bought a little new house okay. in Fontana oh, nice. in this little old neighborhood. Yeah. That's when I actually really started skating. Okay. Yeah. I met some really awesome skaters and from there, just, yeah. there you go. Was Jurgens did, did they sponsor you? No, 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 no. Jurgens was like, that's like, it was like an entry level skate shop. Gotcha. Right. Oh, half bike shop. Yeah. Half. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. That was a time. I, I haven't even seen any skate videos yet. The first skate video I ever saw, I went to uh, a, a, a video store and, and the first skate video was the Search for Animal Chin. Search for Animal Chin. Yeah. I was okay. tripping on it. Like, wow, really? this is insane. And it just came out like probably like within like six months of me renting it. Yep. And then I went back and watched, you know, Future Primitive, okay. watched the Bones Brigade video show. Wow. But that was a time where like, I don't know. Street skating was, was I mean, that's all we, I skated at the time. So we were just kind of like inventing, like, you know, yeah. axle stalls were like huge, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Like, actually, this is, like, bonelesses were already out, though. Like, no one was doing bonelesses. Like, I think bonelesses were already, like, on the way out. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I mean, like jump ramps, <laughs> jump ramps they don't make its way back until when? Like, like mid Two 2000s? years ago? A couple years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised pressure flips haven't come back yet. Yeah. Dude, did you see Ellington did one down the Bricktown stairs? Oh, did he? I've seen that. So good. Yeah. Wow. That, that was gnarly. That was amazing, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I missed that one. Oh, was Instagram? Man. Instagram? No, I mean, no. it was in the new uh, Death Wish. Oh, man. Oh, I haven't uh, seen that. Yeah. Have you seen, no, you haven't seen, seen that? It's no. good. Oh, my no. gosh. Jamie that, Foy, dude. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. That Death Wish video was, <laughs> is gnarly. I bet. I bet. It's pretty rad when, like, to know skateboarding has come so far. Yeah. When you watch a video part and say, I can't do nothing in that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't do any trick. Yeah. It's right. pretty cool. Well, wow. then you see, like, dudes yeah. like Ellington still going at it after all these years. Oh, yeah, like it's that. amazing. Oh, so true. good, man. Well, that last dude, too. I, Jake Hayes. Jake he Hayes. fucking killed rips, it, dude. Yeah. So good. He does a, a kickflip, late shove it over a table. Was that his last trick? I'm flat. You yeah. can't do that, Rich? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no I, couldn't, I couldn't even do that trick when it was in. in. Yeah, like when it was, yeah. I remember Back. seeing Ronnie Bertino do that over a hip. At, do you guys remember Pioneer? Pioneer? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He did that like perfect with no video camera. Nothing. Wow. Just, that was when skating was like, dude skated because they skated, right? right? Yeah. Sock wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> so now you're you're getting good. Right, you're you're skating. Yeah, yeah. So in Fontana, it's just yeah. From what is it, eighty? So I moved there in eighty-eight. We're actually right at the end of eighty-seven, and then I enter. I enter my first like contest called Hellman's in Colton, 
and I think Eric Costin's actually in that contest too. I mean, it was rad. it was gnarly because yeah, it was just a pretty cool contest. Like, How old were you? I was. 11? 11? I got this is like th- a year after you started skating. I got third. Wow. You got third. Yeah, but it was funny because... Was it like w- age divisions? No, yeah. I was sandwiched in with like... I think I might have been under 14. Yeah. The under 14 guys. Mm-hmm. And so... uh But it was cool because I was just kind of doing my own little stuff in my own little world. Like would do like an axle stall and kind of like gazelle out. Mm-hmm. Like just weird little tricks right. when like... And my launching was like nowhere near as high as the other like dudes in puberty launching (laughs) (laughs) like these guys were like puberty launching i'm still like pre-puberty like but um but you know a little mini saran wrap here a little fidget you know but you got third though yeah it was cool i think because i stayed on my board where like dudes were trying to like you know go all all out and and not stay on their board but uh yeah i did that and then just growing up skating in fontana let Mm -hmm. me see here Got shop sponsored right around ninety one. What spot? What shop? By a shop called Blast. Blast. Yeah, everyone from my era, growing up in the Inland Empire, would know what Blast, Blast. is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because it was like Zorlak headquarters. <laughs> really? Oh, whoa. Yeah, like he was like Marcus Solomon. Um, he was just a. I think he might have rode for Zorlak. Okay. And so it was kind of crazy because it was rad though. Mm-hmm. Now, that, like looking back in hindsight. It was sick because, like, he. It's funny how like skate skate shops are so influential, right? Yeah. This is like right around the time where like World is being pushed and Blind Team, mm-hmm. and obviously we ever we were all into that at that time. For sure. But then you have the owner of the skate shop like fully like wearing a bandana, like just pushing Zorlak like to the <laughs> bone, right? <laughs> and um, who was that really good street skater on Zorlak? He had that. They had that one dude that was really good. I remember because he would do front foot impossibles. But um, it was cool. And I look back, I'm like, dude, it's rad when a shop owner is like, this is my kit. This is this what I'm down for. But totally. Right. That shop was cool. It, it's not like he didn't sell any other product, but he was like. That was his shit. That was his, that was his stuff. And yeah. then uh, <laughs> it's funny. That's when the Randy Colvin board came out. Remember the one with the. Naked Girl. Playing with naked Girl. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. And then. um, Yeah. So I got on that shop. That was in Rancho Cucamonga. Mm-hmm. I know that city sounds weird, right? Rancho Cucamonga. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then. uh. Yeah, it was cool. It and was then, actually good times. He actually used to do these like little demos every Friday night. Oh. Yeah, that was like just shop sponsored, yeah. right? So what is it? Like 15% off, 20% off? No free stuff. Maybe a couple free things here. Yeah, I think yeah. no. That, this is way no? before shop decks. Oh. You get free zero like boards, but you have to pay for everything yeah, else. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and no, actually, you know, now I look think back. It's funny how things are like in your brain, oh, like for sure. way back there. He used to um like he also pushed Dogtown. This is like when Wade Spare was on Dogtown. Oh wow! Right? So it was sick. DTS. Yeah. And so he had me like um, get Dogtown boards for like half off. Oh. Actually, I think they might have even sent me a like a promo box too. It was hmm. it was sick. It was like the Richard Simmons boards. Oh wow! You remember that board? The Dogtown. Simmons? The Dogtown Richard Simmons. No. Gosh. It was way before my time. It was sick though. Um, and then Dogtown did have a real good video that came out that time. Oh, did they? Oh, yeah. With Karma and, mm-hmm. and Wade. It was uh, pretty gnarly. Cardiel. So, Cardiel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jake Rosenberg. I think Karma did, oh, a, Jake Rosenberg. Karma oh. did a switch front foot impossible in that in that video. Whoa. Switch front foot impossible. Yeah. And yeah. it might have been in a line, too, actually. Wow. I've never seen yeah. it ever since. Or I could do those, Kelly. <laughs> I, just saw, <laughs> I, I just saw a clip of, of Karma uh, in an old... Japanese video today and I was like that dude is insane oh really yeah, yeah yeah were you starting to film at this time too were you like did any of your buddies have cameras or were you trying to like uh, yeah but the cameras no it, it wasn't like as accessible I know but it seems like one dude a one dude had to had a camera I think like, we started you know. filming like around nine, 91 like okay. started filming like I was trying to find this old yeah, old like sponsor tape, right? Uh-huh. Like right around 91, 92. Okay. The big old VHS cameras. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so right around then, just started skating. Okay. But not like, I think when you were shop sponsored, you're not really trying to, it was just different. I don't it know. It was different, yeah. I don't think it was like how nowadays people, kids know what to do to be sponsored, yeah, right? Right. Like right. make a video. Back then, it's like. Was it like this, a crew that you were just with and you guys just rolled together kind of style? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. let me think. So also, like, well, you because when I was everything else like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. I mean, yeah. I didn't do contests, but I, I we were filming, but it wasn't for a sponsor me video. Right. It was to film for ourselves. Right. You know, it wasn't yeah. anything. Well, that's how we knew 
That's how you you kind of knew each other from contest. So I was in Castle contest. Mm-hmm. Okay. For you know, Castle was California Amateur yeah. Skateboard League. Yeah, yeah. So I I started in 1990 when I was 12. It's funny. My mom would take me to this contest, and then I think 91 skated the shop sponsored. Okay. And I think towards the end, like right around 92, was in the factory, right? Yeah. But um, that's how I, that's how I actually met Daniel Castillo. Chili Willie. Chili Willie. Yeah. <laughs> I met him, and it's funny because. Dude's awesome. Obviously, we're both Filipino, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, did you guys hit it off right away? We got it. I know? think we did. Yeah. Like, I was always like, you know, wow. And obviously, Chili Willie knew him from the magazines, right? Like, okay. he was on World at the time. And mm-hmm. obviously, at, at my age, 14, World was like the best. Yeah, the whole know, camp. I don't know yeah. how to... World, under, under, yeah. So, Daniel, Kareem, Shiloh, and Daywan, they would all go to the con- to, to Castle Contest, yeah. too, and rip and kill it. And so me and Daniel end up being friends and Daniel would like, I'd always ask him for a board. I'm writing like these beat boards okay, and he's right. like, he would kind of give me his used boards. Oh. I'd even buy a couple, I think. Some used like, these are like the world boards with no graphics on them. Uh, yeah, the blank. Yeah, yeah the blanks. Yeah. And then uh, we just kind of had a friendship from there okay. and he'd actually come out to to Fontana. Oh, really? Him and actually day one would come and spend the night. And this at is your like, house? at my house. Oh. We would come and... and They'd hang out, we'd skate, and I'd go to Daniel's all the time. Okay. Then I got on uh, I got on Milk real briefly. Milk, yeah. Milk. Actually, it was on probably for like a year. Right in 2000. Did Christian put you on? Yeah, Christian yeah, put Christian me on. Yeah, Christian Asoy, right? So that was in, in 1991. So I was like shop sponsor for like a year, whatever, you know, shop, yeah. skating for shops. I was at an Encinitas contest. Um, do you remember that at the YMCA? Remember the old Plan B videos? The one with the big... Uh, PVC pipe. Yeah, that one yeah. yeah. I was yeah. at that okay. that place. Right. I was just skating flat ground, like in the parking lot. Christian just is walking by, like watching me and my friend skate flat ground. I think I, I forget who I was skating flat ground with. <laughs> and then from there, he just gets my number and asks me if I want to be on milk. It was just kind of like that. Wow. That oh. Random. <laughs> but like, but you were but day one you were friends with day one and all that. Like they didn't maybe ask you to skate for world or anything. No or they no, didn't, no It wasn't like that. No, it wasn't like that, and it oh. wasn't even like. We were just friends. Yeah. And I was cool, but I wasn't like, I want you like, to get me on. No, 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 no. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, because I was friends with Daniel when I was on Milk. Uh-huh. And then, so I was on Milk for a while. How many, how long do you think you were on Milk? I think I was on Milk for less than a year. Less they than were, a year? Yeah, they were, getting, they were ready to kick me off. Why? <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> Why? Why? Just because it, the team was like half me and then this other guy, Marcus Stroud. Actually, Ron Chapman was on Milk. Mm, whoa. And then Robbie actually, and Jimmy were for him too. Did he? See, I didn't even know wow. that. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. He yeah. did. That's right. But oh. I never met him. But he did. And then, yeah. and then Milk would have this other side that was kind of like burly, mm. like had like Jake Burns and these oh. other guys. And I think that Christian was kind of not really, it was his company, but he was not really involved. I, I, I don't really know. He was to, kind of off doing his yeah. thing, maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I think they were like, oh, this guy, like, I think some of the guys behind it were like, ooh, what? No, they didn't really kind of appreciate maybe the the where skating was at the time. Obviously, it was big pants, small wheels times, yeah, right? Yeah. And so, but at that time, Josh Beagle he moved to Montclair, oh. so he moved to the Inland Empire. Okay. And uh, we started skating with him. He just Sick. would kind of just skate with us, and uh, he would actually, as I became friends with Josh, Josh would pick me up from school, oh. skate with us, and then he's like, hey. He'd, he'd give me foundation boards, and that's how I got on foundation. Okay. Wow. So I got on foundation right on the beginning now, of... Now, did, did you officially... Did they kick you off milk, or did you just leave? No, I left. You left. But okay. word is, they, I was ready. I was already out they the were, door. <laughs> you were out <laughs> the okay. job block? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, yes. did, you, did you feel it? Did you feel that disconnect from them, or did you No, I didn't. Even... It was... No, 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 I didn't. How did just, you tell them that you were leaving then? Just like, hey, I'm going to skate for foundation. Oh, just that's it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm but... Simple. So Todd and Josh are relaunching foundation mm-hmm. and they're doing it outside of world okay and uh josh is like hey you want to skate for foundation it was me and tony brasino oh yeah and tony wrote for milk too right yeah tony wrote for milk too yeah and i wow. think they might have yeah they were probably gonna i don't know what they were gonna do but yeah <laughs> me and tony were friends from castle and then just obviously from milk okay and so it was cool that josh was was awesome to just put us on and, yeah. and, and skate with him. Sick. And at the same time, so I skated skated for Foundation. We made a video okay. called Cocktails. It was oh, pretty yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, it was really fun because this is like skaters filming skaters, right? There's no like Roger Bagley or there's no sock, right? <laughs> right. This is like, hey, here's the camera. Yeah. <laughs> have fun with it. Right. And um, that was really fun. I always remember your intro with the comb. Yeah. 
I think, yeah, yeah, Ronnie. Yeah, and yeah. Ronnie's like, show me your comb. Yeah. The Toblerone. That was oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, that's <laughs> yeah. right, yeah. And I remember when I met Ronnie Crager, that was actually, Josh was like, hey, check out this guy, Ronnie. And it was pretty, I mean, I was wow. like, yeah, Ronnie was is insane. <laughs> yeah, like, it was incredible how insane he was, like, just from the beginning. You know, it makes sense why he's he has he's, such a long career yeah, and respected yeah. dude in skating. Um, and so, what goes on after that? <laughs> uh, oh, so at the time during Foundation, yeah. while while Film Foundation, but at the same time, I was always skating with Daniel yeah, Day One. Day, still, they were my okay. friends. Mm-hmm. And then I think this is right around the time the World Park happened, and I was now like fourteen, so I would come to L.A. a like lot every weekend. What do you do? Think, you take the train? No, no. Me and my friends would come down oh, here, you, or my oh. mom. My mom would drive Your me. Your mom would time. drive you from yeah to Fon- L.A. L.A. I'd come to wow. L.A. from Fontana to L.A. Actually. I was going to school in San Dimas still at the time. Okay. Because... Did you go to San Dimas High? I did. I did. But I wasn't was supposed it to... Was the same was... time that Bill and Ted's came out? No, no. It was a different <laughs> school. I wasn't supposed to go to San Dimas High, even though I lived there till I was 10. My mom would pick me up from school, take me to Chili Willie's house, Janet Castillo's <laughs> house, and I would literally just have like two bucks in my pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like, and but just be so psyched. I'm um, in LA skating the pond, skating. And I'm sure they had money because yeah. they were probably selling product and stuff. Yeah. This too. is the time where like everyone was drinking Snapples. This is right when Snapple <laughs> came out. So Daniel would always have a Snapple. And uh, yeah, I would basically just be getting stuff. I, I was, I, I love the hand me downs actually. Yeah. Yeah. I was so used to riding used boards, like someone else's board, but it didn't bother like someone who's so just into skateboarding and at that time where um just daniel would be like hey henry did this or you know daywan did this you know like every time like you hear a new trick right so like you're very it's like the shock factor where it's like Like, it's awesome you You see like oh someone did an ollie heel flip for the first time well you know what i mean right they weren't posting it on instagram (laughs) (laughs) i remember in 91 i was at a contest in uh in Long Beach, okay. the, the, I think I said this on the pro, uh, the, the last one, but yeah. seeing Solomon, Solomon of God do a switch backside flip on flat ground, I was like, this is before anyone was like, like at least kids who didn't know what pros were doing at the time. Uh-huh. So it, it really messed with us. I remember driving home from the contest, like, wow, skating's like crazy, crazy. <laughs> yeah. Did you go out and try to learn switch backside flips? Couldn't know. No, I think we're just it yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was always a weird trick for me. You did a good yeah. one in the chocolate video. Dang, you like remember? Huh? Oh, yeah, chocolate tour. That was uh, <laughs> that one took a lot of work. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's not like that's not natural. <laughs> I remember seeing Costin switch backside flip this thing in uh, it was in Tampa. He did like in three tries, like it was gigantic. But some people just have it like that, right? Wow, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. right. crazy. It'll take me like ten tries to do a switch backside flip on flat ground. Right. Yeah, it's not an easy trick. You're on foundation, but you keep going back, and now you're coming up to LA a lot. And yeah. the World Park was yeah, maybe yeah. Coming, coming into play. Coming up to LA, and then uh, I think I might have had some footage, kind of getting like just from passed around, maybe. Yeah, from oh. from uh, after the cocktails. Then there's new footage. Okay. And then uh, yeah, I just end up. Daniel's like, hey, I think Daniel, I forget how it was. Daniel wanted me to skate for World. Huh. Like, I know Daywan was down, and they were down. Yeah. They, I was already skating with those guys. I was with, like, when they were filming Love Child, oh. like, I was always, like, with Daniel. So and, you saw and a lot of that stuff. I saw, yeah, yeah all that stuff on Love Child. Wow. It's awesome. So it was actually really awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember going to the courthouse for the first time. and Oh, yeah. What? Shiloh, Shiloh's friend, I forget his name, he was taking off the sign. Taking off the sign, yeah. Yeah, yeah. all that stuff. So, um, oh, you were there? Oh, you I were was there. I, one, the clip that always stands out to me is when you're getting chased by that dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? What was that? Was that in a full? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, my board shoots and hits this this bum's pickle jar, right? <laughs> <laughs> was it a pickle jar? I don't know what it was. Yeah. Like, Piss, yeah. And so he just kind of wakes up like a genie out of a bottle he's like super tall yeah <laughs> like he's so tall and then he just starts kind of acting like he's like running towards me like slow-mo <laughs> slow-mo and then he just starts like literally just remember just yeah. if you see the foreign one he just starts running after me but i think he was just playing with me well that's what it looked like in the footage it yeah. looked like you guys were kind of horsing around no, yeah. it didn't look like the serious <laughs> thing no, i was shook you were were you oh yeah you I, were trying to get away i was but i think i don't think i was uh yeah, I didn't know if he was serious okay. or not. Yeah. yeah. 
Huh. I might have been treed out. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah. I just I just don't remember don't if he was guy. serious or not. Right, so right. When did you and, guys and first the, meet actually? Sorry to interrupt. I met Chris the first time I think we were filming for the hot chocolate tour. Probably. Really? Wait, the hot chocolate the hot chocolate tour is uh the chocolate tour. Sorry, the chocolate, the chocolate tour. Yeah. Right. Yeah. First one. The yeah. Right. The first one. I yeah. met you yeah. at that school in Eagle Rock, and you were new oh. doing the no- that was nolly heel over the bump. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He was bump over the barrier. Savage nolly heel over this a frame. That was good. That's one of your favorite tricks, right? I mean, it was pretty savage. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I was like, wow, this guy is he serious? <laughs> and you did it, Richie. I don't know what the hell I was thinking because it's a bump with like no, no. transition, and no. I, I just didn't like. Hey, like, Richard yeah. Mulder pulls up. You got the chocolate dudes there. He's gonna try to try to bust. Amazing. Trying to bust. And then you started Daniel. Just like, hey, Daniel would always talk about you. Like, hey, yeah. my friend Chris. Yeah, he's gonna come skate, and you'd always just come skate. Yeah. And then, I mean, I, I just loved to skate <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i mean though i wasn't trying to yeah. get on or do you know yeah. what i mean like i just met daniel and uh i just remember your nolly hill flip. thank you bro yeah. thank you you're welcome yeah i well i do remember going to chafee and skating with you at chafee and skating the manual pads and stuff you know when was chafee first started like people started skating there yeah, I first started skating there like in 1990, 90, oh 91 yeah. maybe. Really? I think I had an old, Milk had an old, old, you know, skate zine, uh-huh. like a Xerox zine. And okay. I'm like, I have a photo of me like doing a pressure flip, Rick Kosick pressure <laughs> flip off a stage. No and way. that was like 91. And I think I was already skating there. So I think I first started skating Chafee right around early 91. And were people already skating it before that really? Or was no, it-, it was just, uh, well, I think some of the, more like the dudes from Upland and Ontario and Chino, but it wasn't like every. It wasn't on the map. Yeah. We're like, you know, mm. does that make sense? Yeah, yeah for sure. No. I think it, it started like people started going there like right around 92, 93, mm. 94. Yeah. That's when, when it was ledge like. Skate, ledge skating really started popping off. Yeah. yeah. But even that, like, I don't know if you guys remember Steve Allison. He wrote for Sims. Mm. Oh, do you guys remember that Sims video? Yeah. Do you remember when Sims was part of Santa Cruz and yeah. they had that uh-huh. video? I think uh-huh. Frank Harada was in it. Yep. Anyways, there was a guy in Chino, Steve Allison. Okay. He's Chris Ortiz's brother. Really? Whoa. He is an Inland Empire legend. Like, he he, he rips. Wow. So, he used to have footage from there, too. Oh. Um, I mean, there's a lot of dudes that, like, in that area that were just dudes who never really made it, like, to, yeah. like in skateboarding, but they were, like, they were skating on, like, pro level, I, I think. Well, you, I mean, Chafee, you must have seen a lot of, because when Chafee started popping off... It was like every all the dudes from LA would go down to Chafee. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. I remember uh, when Chafee's guys started coming him. to Chafee. What? What's that? I was gonna say Chafee was the first time I ever saw you. Like I, uh, I came out here to see with Jerry Fowler and we met up with Chris oh. Ortiz. We drove to the Chafee one day and oh. I saw. What Richie. year was that? Ninety six, ninety seven. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you said Jerry Fowler, I thought of Ethan Fowler because oh. mm-hmm. the first time I ever saw Ethan Fowler was at Chafee. Oh really? Huh? Wow. Yeah, yeah. He was like. Man, he was not even on. Actually, he was on Milk. Ethan Ooh, Fowler was on really? Milk too. Yeah, yeah. Damn. I mean, who, was, who wasn't on Milk? Was actually, <laughs> like, who, yeah, who wasn't? Ethan on Fowler was actually like the gnarliest dude on Milk. Now that I think about it, wow. I remember him having a backside lip slide on that rail. Uh, the one guy did the All Impossible lip slide on. Huh. In um, what is that? North Hollywood. It's like a bank or whatever. Yeah, yeah. whatever. But anyway, yeah, yeah, Ethan was huh. incredible. Yeah. But um, yeah. When people started coming to Chafee, because like that's a it was a local spot for us. Mm-hmm. It was just I would just sit and watch these you guys, would? Yeah. and so one of my favorite dudes to come watch would be like Ed Templeton. And actually, you remember, you know Jimmy Riggy, world's Jimmy, best dad. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I tell him to this day, like those guys from Huntington, they would come to Chafee, they'd be skating so fast. Yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah, yeah. I remember Ed would show up, and uh, dude, he would like that mid that one ledge. I, I think it's probably like twenty feet long, but he would just. He's pushing like he's gonna launch. <laughs> not, the, not the one down the three the stairs. stairs. No, no, the one it, in the middle. No, the one in the middle. The one, the one in the middle oh, where yeah. it's like where the brick. But yeah. he just nose blunt side the whole oh, thing. Wow. So you have to like carve wow. into it too. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was savage. And then Jimmy would like be right behind him like lip sliding the whole thing. Him wow, and Jamie, okay. oh, wow. Jamie Hart. Yeah. And um, we would just I would be blown away by that. So these guys rip. Wow. It's kind of so it was cool like seeing like dudes like that. And that was when nose blunt sides were like. Ed kind of took it to the bench level. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, which I, I think he did, you know? 
So. Damn, you must have seen so many amazing skateboarders come through there, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, it was cool. I mean, that was just our local spot, you know. So but you were like the dude there too. That was like your spot. It was like Richard, yeah. JP, and Joey. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and then Jess McCraney later. Oh yeah, Jess McCraney was sick. Then when you say those guys, yeah, I, I remember those guys like. <sighs> Joey, like nine years old, JP. Like, <laughs> so when you say those names, I just see, I yeah. see like it from the young like a, version, infancy. Yeah. yeah, I don't see Andale bearings, Joey. Yeah, yeah. Right? I, see, <laughs> I see, see Joey see like working on. Yeah, yeah. yeah Bucky. I see Bucky working right. on like his backside tail slides and his backside heel flips. Like, yeah. I've seen how he has those tricks mastered. That's amazing. But he's always had those tricks mastered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, let's go back to the. Um, world uh, the world park yeah you were skate you were coming up here and staying was yeah. it was it a trip i mean this whole this w- world park was huge yeah they I had mean, two in of my them. eyes they had two of them what do you mean they had one well they remodeled one right was it remodeled yeah no that was... one went through the phases it was like all wood and then it was like they painted it no, there was and a it was big, graffiti no there was a big mini ramp there oh. and then then they had the park i don't think i've ever saw footage of that yeah, there's footage of that. Is though. there? Yeah, yeah. There was a big. I think it might have been seven or six feet big mini ramp, and then they took it down and had the. They built that one like, what is it called? Like a volcano, oh. kind of thing. Oh yeah, yeah. The Where one that's getting like the Kareem does like a backside flip yeah. over like. Oh, a, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah, yeah, used yeah. to be a mini ramp right there. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, so just uh, skating with the world guys, mm-hmm. and then yeah, got on right around. Spring to 93. So how did that come about? Did they just, <clears throat> did, well, Daniel and Day One and then wanted you on, right? Did Rodney ask you to come on? Yeah, and then yeah, how and did then, that, did you have to talk to Rod? <laughs> I think I've just maybe seen Rod a couple times, like okay. met him, and then uh, maybe he saw some of the clips that I was filming with Sock. A Sock would film me because I'm with them. Yeah. Um, and then uh, he called me one day. I was just skating in front of my house in Fontana. Richard. <laughs> yeah. yeah he called Rodney me. Mullins on the phone. <laughs> kind of. Like it was kind of like whatever. that. But yeah. it was, yeah, yeah. Someone's on the phone. And then he asked me to skate for World. Wow. And uh, it was tough, though. But, you know, when you're 14, like, no, 15. Okay. Gosh, there's just no, like, I, I really enjoyed also skating for Foundation, too. Okay. Like, Josh Beagle, Todd Swank, those guys are amazing, yeah. right? But at the time, were you skating more with yeah, the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, so it, I was. It made more sense to you, yeah. maybe. like, endings are so hard, right? right? Did you call him? How did, how did, the, how did, the, how did you break did up? Did you call Josh or No, I Swank? called Todd. I called Todd, and it's funny, because he got, he was really bummed out, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, and so I, I did a world ad. I think he made it. Oh, man, you know what? Now I think, I think he might have found out through that world ad. Really? How did they, how did it go down? What do you mean? I, I don't really know exactly how it went down, okay. but I do know this is how it went down. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Okay, so. Okay, what happened? I had a foundation ad in, in in Big Brother. Okay, what was the ad? I was doing a fakie 360 flip, fakie nose grind. Oh. On a curb. On a curb. On a curb. Okay. Oh. Okay. And um, at the same time, right when I got on World, they're like, hey, let's just shoot this really quick with Rocco in a Porsche. So I get in Rocco's Porsche, and we're we're flying past the World, the, the, like the World headquarters. And okay. I'm like, I'm on waving the camera. Right? Yeah. Oh, and you're then, waving. Yeah, they're waving. And then so that ends up being an ad. <laughs> In on the I think the back cover of the magazine. Uh-huh. So you uh, see my foundation ad, and then you flip through, and then you'll see the world ad waving, me, waving. And there was like this, like this, like maybe it was like a comical beef. I don't really know at the time, right? <laughs> you were young, you yeah. Didn't even so, think. but it was messed up because think about it. Now as you know, it's even more fucked up. Is in Big Brother, right? Is a Big Brother, and then Rocco owned Big Brother's ad. Right. So he already knew that Foundation had an ad of you in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then oh he throws gosh. an ad <laughs> in the back of you being on their team. Right. Exactly. So, for the first time in my life, I feel that like that like when I saw it, like that stomach feeling of like I gotta explain oh, man, this. Someone got hurt. Like <laughs> right. You know, I always try to like be cool with everybody, right? But the fact that like, dude, someone spent mo- even now now like. Someone spent money yeah. to like run this ad. Even back then, probably a couple grand for sure. Yeah, and again, I felt the, really the fucked bad. up thing is like Swank gave money to Rocco to run the ad in his magazine, yeah. and then Jeez. he runs that ad in his yeah. own magazine. Yeah. But obviously, like, so World was all about that, right? At that yeah. time, yeah, but like, I, I love that though. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that was kind of the allure, also. Yeah. Yeah. Like this, yeah. But know. I felt really, I felt really bad. You did, and it was cool. I think I saw Todd. Maybe ten years, like seven years ago, I saw him at a trade show. Oh, it was cool. Like it was like when. Do you remember Skatebook? 
Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, Mike saw, Ballard. Yeah, Mike yeah. Ballard and yeah. Salt. Like so I saw him at one of those things and uh it was really cool. Was it? Like it felt like the the hatchet was buried. I think he might have was having a kid at the time, but not that, not that there was a hatchet, but like it was cool like at it's the like, same yeah, time, I think I just, even it's like when you sorry. peel a band aid off, it just stings at the like, time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But, but at, the same, at, the, at the time, too, he probably just knew that it was more Rocco than you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, he probably oh, knew. Oh, I think that. Todd was making a pitchfork. Yeah, world boards. Now that I think about it, yeah. I actually thought those boards were amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they said world history on them. Yeah, they did. And they were foundation boards. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I don't know. Like, I'm just, just again. I'm at this time. I'm a kid That's skating incredible. with just my friends, right? Did, did you eventually say? You, did you go eventually go up to Todd and be like, "Yo, sorry, I, I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna skate for world." And like, no, no. So you I was had like, a conversation hey, and, and, with yeah, him. Todd was really bombed, and oh. I was like, oh. and so it was a, it was like, it was a bumming conversation. No. And then so. Yeah, I ended up skating for World. That was after the ad came out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. I love that old world beef, though. I love that whole, like, I you think know. it was just that, though. It was just, that was, that was, that was a crazy one. I can't believe he did that. Yeah. Now I think about it, but. um, He was probably loving it. Yeah. Loving yeah, yeah, yeah. it. But now you're, now you're with all your buddies, though, that you've been skating with constantly. Yeah. You and, know? and So and that's a good feeling. For sure. I mean, it was great skating with, with, like, always skating with Daniel and yeah. Day One. Right. And then now we're filming for New World Order at the time. Shiloh, sk- yeah. oh my gosh, he was. Shiloh was amazing in that part. I think he was. That, he had probably one of the best parts mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. video. Mm-hmm. He was doing mm-hmm. so much stuff. But then that video also came out right at the same time, uh, like maybe almost like a few weeks right after the Plan B video came out. Mm. I think virtual. The, yeah, virtual. Yeah. yeah. Which was insane. I remember going to that premiere. I should have waited a little bit. Clear out the air yeah, for a little while. Yeah, right. But um, yeah, that was good stuff. Good, good fun times. How long did you skate for the uh, world? How long? This is 93. And I think Rick and Mike start girl right around. 94. Yeah. yeah. No, they start girl like right. right girl started fall, like 90, 93. And then I think. Right. Chocolate was 94. 94. Yeah, like yeah. so girl was like fall 93, then then chocolate was right at spring 94. Did you know Rick and Mike and all those dudes at that time too or were they kind of off doing something? They're their own off thing? kind of skating. So that, you didn't know, you didn't no. really know that. Even though like everyone skated like under the world camp, mm-hmm. right? Like I think even when it was when we were on I'd say girl and chocolate, right? Everyone kind of skates like like I'm skating with these dudes. Uh, Everybody but, has their own little crews. Yeah, yeah. But we're all family, sure. but it's just of course. The but you crew would probably was... see them at the at the World Park, you right? Know? Right. Yeah. And then uh, from what I remember, I remember Rick and Mike and Eric and all those guys come to film for the for the girl video because mm. you know they're making a video, right? Yeah. Girl just started, and they're like, "Hey, we're gonna." Mike's like, "Hey, we're gonna do chocolate." He asked me to skate for chocolate. Wow. And this was a time where like. We didn't really know. At, I mean, at 16, 15, you don't. You're like, where's where's world even gonna go, right? Like, mm-hmm. so. But you see all these the amazing time, dudes right, leaving. Right. It's like, dude. Yeah. Like, like this is the new shit. Like Mike Carroll's like, asking me to skate for chocolate. Right. Um, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I'm serious, Dude, right? Yeah. So it's like, it was awesome. I I love the name. It's mm-hmm. everything was cool, and to be a part of something that was new. And girl had already been around for a year, so you'd ob- yeah. you'd obviously have seen that direction and seeing okay, this is yeah, this is sick, right? Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. was just it was amazing at right. that time, right? Like yeah, yeah. shook the industry. I thought it's you a really big, did. it's a big thing. Yeah, it's a big uh, thing. Uh, how was it like? How was the response on the East Coast? It was just one of those things. Like oh fuck, all these guys just left. That's a huge thing, yeah. man. Yeah, that's gnarly. That doesn't happen too much anymore. Mm. Or, a bunch of people just leave and start something new. They could, yeah, yeah, it definitely could, but yeah. it doesn't happen like that. Yeah. But so I was but pretty, even if it does now, it's it's almost not as big as if a, a, a shake everyone up, already, you know, leaks yeah. it on Instagram. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. No, it was really cool. I mean, Gabriel Rodriguez, Paulo Diaz, Ben, yeah. Shamil. Oh my God. Um, Daniel. Yeah. York. He was Go, awesome. Chico. Wow. Chico. Chico. Yeah. yeah. I knew I was missing the main <laughs> man. Yeah. The Chico. Chico. Mr. Chico. Mr. Chocolate. Yeah. 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 Chico Latte. Gosh, Chico. <laughs> He's still Ripping. skateboarding. Dude. Just, like every day. How did that conversation go down with Rodney? Did you have to talk to Rodney? Because I remember at the time everybody was calling him. Somebody was saying it earlier too that they were 
they, they were all in a hotel room and they were like passing, passing the, the phone, phone around. around. Yeah. No way. Is yeah. that for girl or, <laughs> for girl or chocolate? For both, probably. I, well, maybe it was for girl. For who girl. was that? Was it Jerron that was saying that? I forget who. Somebody was on our show. They were saying that. They were just passing the dubs. phone. Yeah. Then, yeah, well, like dubs. not hanging it up and just giving it to a person oh, to yeah. person? Like, yeah. oh, hold on, Rodney. Uh, oh, my uh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chef, you want Chef, you want, yeah, here you go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> right? So how did that, how did that go down with you, though? Um, I called Rodney. It was actually it was really hard for me. Yeah. Like, cause I actually really like I liked Rodney, right? Like, uh, we're young, so like everyone had the like Rodney impression, right? Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> like there were some guys who could really do him really well, like okay. his voice and stuff. Can you do it? I can't. I can't do it. But I mean, I went on tour with Rodney, and uh, Rodney's amazing. Like, I was like, I liked him. He yeah. Was, so it was really hard for me to like also like quit World, and so. Yeah, I called him up. He was, it was just bumming. Like no one likes, you know. Yeah, but um, he's already lost half his teams. Yeah. You know. Yeah, man. But at the same time, it probably wasn't that much of a shock to him either. It's just like, oh, here's another dude's. Qu-. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of dudes before you had broken the ice, so to speak. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I imagine if he had caller ID, then he'd be like. Oh, but what made it different <laughs> was like <laughs> Richard's calling. I think that I just didn't have any like beef with him. Like, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Like, right. So that was kind of. You know, when you're sponsored, it's like you're getting bored. Yeah. It's almost, but like, it's almost like I'm quitting because I, I see, like, I like chocolate, yeah. right? Like, yeah. There's nothing wrong going on with what you were doing already, right? Right, right. But, yeah. but, yeah. Brand but it was just kind of hard because Rodney, like, even, like, day one, day one who didn't go, like, day mm-hmm. one, like, it was all, like, they were still rad They dudes, were still rad, like, totally. Kareem, yeah. Shiloh, so it was hard. How did you take it? You took it all right? Yeah. 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 And uh, how long were you on chocolate before... They turned you pro. Turned me pro right after the chocolate tour. So I'd say end end of ninety nine. Oh really? Yeah. It was yeah, after end the of ninety nine. The chocolate tour, like uh, I thought you were pro before that for some reason. But that's, I mean that was five years later. No? Yeah. Was five six years later yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. You were Am all in like Paco and everything like that. I was Am. Yeah. 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 Damn. Am. Yeah. How was it who filming you, all those, those sketches? Yeah, did you play? <laughs> who, I can't remember who you played. Did I you wasn't play, in uh, Paco. I uh, I didn't do the skits. Oh, you didn't I, do the skits. Yeah, I didn't do the skits. I didn't make it on that, that uh, train. Right. What happened? So I think my uncle passed away. Oh. One of my uncles, like basically, he was my uncle, like a good friend of my, mm-hmm. my dad's. Okay. So I didn't, I didn't go. Right. I didn't make it out there. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, that's why maybe I don't remember you in the skit because yeah, you weren't in it. I wasn't yeah. in that one. <laughs> yeah. No, totally. Yeah. Uh, um. Well, video, dude. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm totally fucking blanking right now the video or the the chocolate tour right right what did you play in that i played like the the mute guy no like (laughs) you walk in the shop like yeah oh that's right right. and then like gino skate park oh yeah yeah. Yeah. (laughs) kind of like the mute like that's amazing (laughs) the mute mute dumb guy (laughs) (laughs) the stoner skater like who smoked way too much weed in 94 like Like, he can't uh, think in 99 uh, doesn't like let his wife hand you something yeah, like a camcorder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then that's, that's so where funny. Robbie's... And oh, that was Robbie's part. And the, the footage that was on McKinley? the McKinley? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's In right. the van. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. No, no, yeah. no. They were in the van, though, Raj. It wasn't... Yeah, no, but like, he's the one that brought the camcorder yes, into the yes, van. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Dude, that part... That, when you said, do you know Skate Park? Yeah. And, like, me and my friends would say that for so... Like, that was just like the no, one quote. No, Gino Skate Park. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I did that on accident, like, in real life. Like, What do you mean? Like, I said... I th- I think oh, you actually said that like really thinking. Yeah, cause I, I think Spike said say this, but then I thought he, I thought he said Geno Skate Park. Yeah, <laughs> dude, we would film some of those skits like at two in the morning, three yeah. in the morning. So I'm like, I'm so <laughs> tired. Yeah, yeah right. And like, after all day of skating, and all those guys like you know who do that like on the everyday, right. like they're like night owls oh, probably. Yeah, like, for when sure. you guys were doing chocolate tour, actually, you weren't in, really I wasn't involved in at that, all. No. But like, how big was the crew for like those skits? Was it just Spike with a camera? Or no, like... I think he'd have like maybe like a few dudes with him. Really? Yeah. Like a sound guy maybe? Yeah, yeah. I think there were guys, guys, guys out there. Guys yeah. Guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah, especially like when that, that skit with like Ray and Keenan at the mm-hmm. gas station. Oh, yep. yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, I think he had a he had some dudes with him. All right. Oh. I think it might have been like Johannes and and like some of the guys that girl, maybe Aaron too. I don't really remember. Yeah. yeah. Aaron yeah. came on right around that same time. Yeah, yeah. not a big production. Same with Sam. Just a couple, Sam couple yeah. But they Sam were dudes who like, knew yeah. they were doing what they were doing. It's yeah. not like they weren't like skaters. Like yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Was that? Did you guys take a long time to film those? Like over a long period of time, or is it all like 
couple days, you just knocked him out. I think those skits were like within like uh, like a couple weeks, but like spread out days. Yeah. Did you do them on the road? No, they were all the all in the, the chocolate tour. Yeah, those were all done like in the L.A. area. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I was in that video. Shared a part yeah. with Chili Willie. Yeah, that yeah. was your Nolly Hill. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Back then, is like remember when Jamie Thomas was on? And he was like, he's like a video part is to me is like fifty or for him he's like it's like fifty tricks. Right. And I was like. Dude, my one of my favorite videos is a chocolate tour, and dude's parts for a minute long. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. you know, and it's like they probably had like f- fifteen clips. Uh-huh. I don't know. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's just funny, but that video is awesome. And Costin's part, it's like a minute and a half full long. song. Yeah, it's about fifty clips. Well, what's yeah. kind of cool yeah. about that time is, uh, I mean, yeah. So those, it's more me- memorable, right? Because right. nowadays it's like I think Brian Anderson said it about like Instagram, and you know when he was on the show yeah, here, yeah. he was saying how like. It kind of takes away the specialness of certain footage. Yeah, totally. Right. True. And so, yeah, like nowadays, like I'll watch the gnarliest thing of so and so, right? And I, it won't even do anything to me. Right. I feel like I'm like numb to it. Well, you yeah. can't even remember the name of right. the person. Well, but probably. dude, yeah. like you know, you, it's like they, there's you, a there's a reason why you guys were a girl in chocolate, and mm-hmm. you guys seriously like were the, the best. Like the style, everything was such like you just want, and the music was good. Everything was just like you wanted to watch it. You know, so to the, but back then, though, like videos would only come out every six months. Exactly, right? but so like videos video would come, come out, out. It would be special. And yeah. you, no, but even though if it, any video came out, it yeah. was like Girl and Chocolate was the shit. The yeah. dudes were the like had the best out of the best tricks. Like that was the one everybody would be waiting for. Yeah, yeah the anticipation was. was killing people. Yeah. You know. Yeah, this had the best writers, dude. Yeah, and it was cool. Like I think I like seeing people in their era too yeah right? yeah, like yeah. i think when it's time to pull a plug you got to pull the plug oh yeah oh i i don't know i, I don't know P- some people feel different but right. for me it's like like when i got towards the end of like my skate career right mm-hmm. where i think 2005 2006 okay for me i was like man how many front side cricket grinds like <laughs> like do you want to see me do or like like i would i felt like it was when it started feeling like a job and like I wasn't stoked to go skate, yeah, that's where I really had to ask myself like, this doesn't feel like the, the eleven year old like learning tricks in front of his house, right? Yeah. And not that it should, because it's obviously a job, but that's where I started thinking like, okay, and I'm also married, yeah. right? And I have real life bills. Yeah. No, not I didn't have a kid yet, so it's like, oh man, just that whole pressure. So right, right. I kind of saw the writing on the wall, like Egyptian uh. hieroglyphics, like, <laughs> and so I don't know. We were just talking about that, right? Yeah. Like, I think yeah. with 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 uh, just transitioning, yeah. I just felt like, dude, I'm done. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 like what? Eldridge just got on chocolate. Like Dev Devin Calloway just got on chocolate. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. these guys are killing it. Like. You know, I don't right. know. You must oh, have really sure. felt like that when I got on. Oh, yeah. You know I was mean? scared. Like, <laughs> but I don't know if I'm making sense. But no. What about uh, filming for Mouse, though? Mouse was, the, I think, for me, I said this today over at Girl, like, that was my favorite video. Oh. Like, yeah. to even film for, even though it wasn't a chocolate video, I felt like skating-wise, I felt like I was in a good... I, f- I was having a good time on my board. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed going out and skating with everyone filming for the video. When I look back at that video part, I'm like... I like I like it more than some of my other video parts. So I really enjoyed the mouse video. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like, I mean, obviously Guy Mariano at the end. I knew. Yeah, Eric. Yeah. And those guys. Either one of the, either one of those guys could have had the last part, right? right. Yeah. Um, that video was awesome. So yeah. I, I'm really I think mouse for me for me was uh, probably the thing I'm pretty stoked at. Like I was able to be a part of. I mean, the whole video, that was one of those videos that you never fast forward anyone's part. In. Yeah. It, like, there was not one part that you just like, ah, no, nah, I don't want to watch this. It's like... Beginning you, to end. Yeah. Every yeah. single time. And one of the best soundtracks ever. Yeah, I think Aaron Mays is just... Yeah. On point. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's always yeah. been one of my favorite dudes yeah. to edit. Because he just picks good music. Yeah. And Even everything. Sean Sheffy. I mean, like, that. his part in Oh, that. yeah. Dude, oh. It's so sick. So, like, filming for Mouse and everything. Were you on, like, a uh, shoe company? Were you... Was it... Yeah, actually... Um, because DVS, DVS start started right yeah. at the end of 95, right at the beginning of 96. Okay. Were you getting shoes from anyone else before I was that? on Etnies. Oh, you were on so Etnies? I, I, w- I was on an Etnies, that, one of their videos. Is it Five? The High Five? five? High Five, yeah. yeah. I have a line in that, oh. in, a, in a clip, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, Don Brown's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. And, but then And then again, DVS was a similar, like, mm-hmm. Tim Gavin's, like, starting this thing, yeah. DVS, and... 
I'm like, yeah, this sounds sick. So yeah. that's how it kind of. But it was a little, little interesting because I remember the first DVSs, uh-huh. they were crazy. I mean, you're, <laughs> you're, you're already at Etnies and it's like they have their shoe, you know, the XL. They have their shoes. Was it the, the wrap? The wrap. The wrap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But all their shoes were already like tightened up. They were in the shoe game for, for a minute. Yeah. yeah. DVS yeah. comes in. And DVS comes trying in. Trying to figure it all out. Trying to figure it all out. I uh. remember we'd do like just a couple kick flips and it's like it looked like I was skating in the shoes for like three months <laughs> oh wow yeah like some I was looking at some old footage uh, just recently it's yeah. like those shoes would blow out crazy right. but that again we're talking about like you right know about super glue then no <laughs> no super no shoe goo you remember when it, like I don't know how it was when you started skating like when, when ollies came in right oh yeah like if you had your ollie holes like your sight <laughs> yeah. so pumped but then like you're like oh man you want these shoes to last it's yeah. kind of funny yeah. yeah well you know hot chocolate tour for me was like one of my first major tours i mean i think i went on the audio tours and stuff before that maybe uh, i can't remember but it, but it was a, a month in the van you know mm-hmm. and it was like spike jones and you know we, we were at the skate park and this dude had like you know big sound equipment for people that were mic'd up and it was crazy dude that was a crazy tour yeah because well first of all any you had t- one of the best quotes in that video which oh yeah, yeah people cool. just want to see you skate oh yeah yeah a, a demo yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but i like i always think about that quote constantly when it's just like when dudes are like stressing out about stuff like dude people just want to see you skate what about your seat in your vans like your home? That's the second best quote. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because that's so true. It is true, though. Yeah. No, but that, that is a very memorable quote that you had, though. Yeah. It's true, though. In uh, Teamwork's a Dreamwork. Yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. too. Yeah. That's John Maxwell. That's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, dude, I'm thinking of tours right now. Yeah. It's like yeah. anything past 10 days is gnarly. Gnarly. But then going on these 30 day tours, I think I've been on. Like three over thirty day tours. Mm, wow! Mm-hmm. And you just you come back changed. Right? Oh yeah, oh, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. right. <laughs> but um, that was a long tour. What was the first t- one you did? Uh, the first tour was a, a world tour I did in '93 with Shiloh, Kareem. I think Daniel. No, no, no. It was Shiloh, Kareem, Rodney, and, and Jerron. Really? Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you? U.S. Just a you? Just a U.S. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, that tour was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever happened to the footage from that? Was that just for a video? Or no, was that for... we didn't have a camera. We didn't have a video guy. What that were was... we doing? Just demos and we stuff? We just, or... yeah. Like I said, like that was, I think that was. You guys when... didn't even escape the cities you went to, huh? You just did the demo and then you chilled. Yeah. yeah. Did the demos and oh. just bounced. Just drove to the next spot. Yeah. This was a pretty budget, like just staying in a random hotel, like shitty no, hotels. No, I think Rodney was just a seasoned tourist. Like he knew how to tour, right? Yeah. So. No, he 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 was the TM, so he knew what to do. It okay. was cool, right? Yeah, damn. I'm sure, back then, world was crushing it then. Oh. so you guys were probably standing in some pretty good spots. Yeah, I mean, you know what? That was the f- that was the first time, like the longest I've ever been away from home. I remember, I think I was in Ohio. I forget where I was at. I was, I think, in Pennsylvania, and I remember crying in my bed. Oh my god! <laughs> like, because remember, prior to this, yeah. like you don't, you never been on tour. You're 15 years old. Oh yeah. And you've might have just spent the night at your friend's house, a, you know, a couple times, right? Yeah. But <laughs> now you're away from home for like, you know, in a hotel room yeah, for like dang, day 21, right? And you're young, right? And um, dude, you start missing your dog, start missing your mom, yeah. start missing everybody, right? Yeah. Start missing people that you didn't even know you missed. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, but th- yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was gnarly. But no. yeah, I'm sure you had to get your parents' permission and everything to go. Were they, were your parents supportive of from skating and stuff? Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. Yeah, they were never like tripping. On, yeah, no. that's so weird. Now that I think about it, like if my son were to go on a trip, I had to like, give permission for him to leave the <laughs> state probably. No, right? that was, yeah, no, no. Really? No, I think didn't have to get like written consent. consent? I don't think you're so. Underage? This is skateboarding. No. <laughs> like, like, I, I don't think no. I don't think so. Uh, your kid's eight. Okay. If he turns fifteen, yeah, like you're saying, like no, I'll know every little detail about like who's taking him, right. et cetera, et cetera. Right. Yeah. But um, were your parents that were they? No. No. <laughs> like, no. Were just like goodbye. Yeah, go. go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They yeah. they were not like that. But they knew already you were sponsored and yeah. Doing yeah. Thing, yeah. Yeah. You know? You graduate high school? I did. You did. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. I graduated a year early. Uh, doing independent studies. Oh, so you did? Oh. I went regular freshman, sophomore. Okay. 
right around my junior year, like it's weird. I started getting, I, I get anxiety. Like I've always, I've always struggled with anxiety. Okay. Like I like generalized anxiety disorder. Okay. But um, I didn't know what it was till as a, as a grown adult. Right. I used to get anxiety attacks back then. I used to think it was from from smoking, you know, weed or yeah, yeah, from yeah. doing the things. And and maybe it maybe, might have been for smoking weed. Maybe it <laughs> triggered it. No, because I actually read that like you know people who have a genetic bend towards towards certain things okay. like we we can ex like marijuana or substances could expedite that. Oh yeah. And oh. so I mean you know my. My, I have a fam, like history of like my mom. Like I didn't know what it was at the time, right. yeah. so I would get these random like heart palpitations oh. and just start feeling flush and just. But I didn't really know what it was. Like I yeah. still get it to okay. this day. But right? you had a regular heartbeat. Um, I've done every single heart test, like yeah. heart doctor. They're yeah. like, people get irregular heartbeats and palpitations all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but for some reason, like when you get those sensations. Um, Maybe triggers. It triggers like an anxiety or, to uh, where like uh, the best way I could describe it is like it feels like you're getting chased by like a bull, but there's no bull. There's no bull. <laughs> yeah. So like physio- physiologically, like your body starts like manifesting as you in like that, I gotta get the hell out of here. It goes into yeah. fight or flight, yeah. right? And so but, I think I've been getting that since I was 16. Oh, mm-hmm. but now you're older and you know how I, to. I, deal with it, right? I, yeah, I know how to deal with it. it maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm learning how to control it a little yeah. better. Um, but anyways, mm. um, so I used to get that at my junior year. Okay. So I started taking independent studies, and I graduated year early. Oh wow! Yeah. And then you were free to go on these tours and skate and do it. no college. You didn't want to go to I went to a little bit college of college. Or, yeah. I went to a little bit of college. I uh, went to a, I I probably have like a year and a half of Chafee community college. School? Actually, did I did go to Chafee School, <laughs> Chafee High School, and then I oh, also wow. went to a Bible college. Oh, you did? Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. I oh, went, wow. but that was like like years later. Oh, your month long tour for World, and then you did one for Chocolate. What was that? You said maybe you did three of them. Yeah, we I did two long chocolate tours. Two long chocolate tours. Yeah, so so right when Chocolate started, we went we did a real long tour. We did. Yeah, that was pretty fun too. Yeah. Okay. Was that when what was it? The firm was with it. Too? Yes. Okay, yes. 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 Yeah. That was one of the. Best like tour yeah. articles Lance, ever for yeah, one did. Yeah, yeah, that was sick. Yeah. Lance, Ray, James Qua, Weston. Wow. Yeah, I think that's those four. Yeah, I think was... if I'm missing someone that sucks. Don't you hate yeah. that? Oh, yeah. for sure. Wait, so <laughs> sure. with the firm was out of Girl and Chocolate? No. No, it wasn't. It was just like, let's just do a tour. Just buddy system. Yeah. That's tight. I think Lance and Rick just were good friends skateboarding together and yeah. they'd like, hey, let's tour together. It's almost like a low budge, uh, like uh, Beating the Beast. Beating the Beast. <laughs> oh, yeah. But before that was even like a marketing thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. just like they're on tour with us. Mm-hmm. When did they turn you pro, and how did they? Did they, did they surprise you or anything? No. Do you remember how they did that? <sighs> no, we didn't really get surprised. No, they just came. Stevie and I, like Stevie Williams. Yeah, he got on Chocolate, mm-hmm. and then when they released, they released our boards together. Together, oh, yeah. Sick. So like, oh. I, you know, we'd see kind of like. No, but it wasn't like... Right after the video dropped? Yeah, just yeah. shortly after. But it's not like... So I think nowadays, or well, maybe in the last 10 years, yeah. from what I, from being like a spectator, like <laughs> like everything's chronicled, right? So yeah, so here, let's let's show them the board. Like everything's like an opportunity to... Yeah, to make like, a story out of it, yeah. To make a story, right? Okay. But I think back then a lot of... It just... It just, it just what happened. It just happened. But you, had a, you, probably, had a, you probably had an ad. Like a pro ad or something. Yeah, right? I did actually. Yeah. I okay. had a a nollie kickflip back tail slide. Oh, I don't know if oh that yeah. Was an ad? Yeah, I think it was an ad. Yeah, yeah it was. You yeah. Went, it was nollie flip back tail, and you went back to straight, right? I went back to fakey. Oh, you went to yeah, fakey. Yeah, I went to fakey. Yeah. Was it at Chafee? Oh. It was at Chafee, but a different ledge. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Girl Chocolate made this super cool, like they always make these fun things, like whether it's posters, but they made this cool, like uh, this how you say it, this perforated. Like paper, where oh, yeah. you can kind of take apart, and it'll be like a, a stack of cards, and yeah, you could see the sequence. Oh, sick! It was cool. I had that in my oh. binder when I was in high school. <laughs> Kelly, what? Did I don't know if it was for shops, <laughs> just for shops yeah. or whatever, but That's it was dope. cool. Yeah, like some PLP stuff. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Wow. So now you're pro. How did that feel? Did it feel any different turning pro, or was it a? I I thought it was cool. I, I mean, everyone. Cool. I mean, like you're, you're sponsored, changed. you want to turn pro, right? Right. But um, right. it's funny. I think just. I think from just skateboarding for for that long already on chocolate, yeah. it was just like I have a board, right? Well, because like you said, it was like five or six years on chocolate right. before you turned pro. Yeah, I just feel like it didn't feel like, 
like okay here comes my best now yeah i almost felt like um like my amateur parts were obviously were my best skating okay oh. for me you think so i don't know i meant it, like mouse i was amateur the well cho- that's why i was gonna say chocolate tour i was amateur I, I thought you were pro the whole time just because you were yeah you were really good back in mouse and i was mm-hmm. just like oh it's tight I think a lot of people did because I, I, well, I, I hear that. Yeah. I've heard that. But uh, no, I wasn't. So, um, but yeah, it was cool. I was stoked to have a board on chocolate. Yeah. For sure. I think, though, it was kind of cool, though, that like being pro for like the girl in chocolate camp was like not like an easy handout, too. Oh, yeah. Right. So, no. even getting so, on the team. Right. Yeah. So, like nowadays, <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, that dude's it. pro. And I'm like, oh, that dude's pro. Like, and it was only like a time span of like a year or so. Right. right. So, um, and then prior to like our generation, people would turn pro like via contest, right? There yeah. You go. Like NSA, right? Yeah. So I think the whole early 90s era, like turning pro based on video parts was like this new. But also too, in the early 90s, like you had to do like Rocco being like, you know what? I can make a pro out of anybody. Right. And like, mm-hmm. I'm going to try Chris Burnout pro. And that's what Rocco did, right? Yeah. yeah. And that kind of carried on. Mm-hmm. Like where like board companies turn people pro, right? Where it wasn't mm-hmm. contest. So. Yeah. It's an interesting time. The demand yeah. there, yeah. So I think it's always, I but think I mean, it's hard. Like if I had a skateboard company yeah. and turning someone pro, it's like, I think it's I think it's a hard decision, man. Yeah. It's yeah. not easy. Yeah. Unless I'm a small company, I'm like, I'm going to turn them pro, yeah. right? But like <laughs> yeah. you think about Girl and Chocolate, like the arsenal and the, of talent that they had. It's like, right. you know, like even Mike, Mike York turned pro. I think he turned pro maybe a couple years before me. But still, oh. like, he was still, like, am for a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I, I always think of you guys always being pro, right. my, like, just for my No, because he had, like, he always had, like, either the first part. Actually, he he had a lot of the probably first parts. Paco. But he had the first it's part. Probably, he had it, the first part in Paco, right? But it's probably after Paco they turned him pro. Yeah. No. I don't remember. I don't remember uh, either. Yeah. Yorkatron, if you're watching. Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> DM <Yeah>. in. <laughs> DM. <laughs> was that the last video you were in? Hot chocolate tour? Were you a Nike video? No, the hot chocolate oh. tour, and then I had some. Yeah, right. I had some stuff in. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And then, and then on then tap. No. On tap. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that was like Nike's promo. Yeah, that was like the last part I think I had. The that last Nike part. promo. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Did you so, have anything in nothing but truth? No, I don't think so. No, I no, I, no, I didn't. No. Well, how did the Nike thing come about? Was that a uh, so? Were you still on DVS at the time? No. So in two thousand two, two thousand two. Yeah, I was skating for Stussy at the time. Oh. So I was on Stussy for already a few years. And um, Nike, Robbie. yeah, yeah. Nike comes, like Sandy Bodeker, one mm-hmm. of the guys at Nike, comes to Robbie and says, hey, I really like the way you guys kind of was able to kind of go into skateboarding and we just kind of liked how you did it. And uh, so then they wanted to put together a team. Okay. And it was cool, man. They They asked me if I wanted to ride for them. Right. Um, obviously, I think I was at the right place at the right time. Yeah, yeah. There was already <laughs> thousands of skaters, like better. Mm. Um, but they want. They obviously uh, found a liking and mm-hmm. thought that I would be a fit yeah. to their team. So they put me on, and then they also gave Robbie like, "Hey, help us pick a team." Oh. So I had some input in helping Robbie put together this team. Sick. Um, Robbie knew about skateboarding, but he also has like you know he like surf background, all that stuff. So I'm like, hey. Gina would look good, you know. Yeah. Super would look good. Reese Forbes look good. I thought Reese would really look good, like wearing Nikes. Yeah. Yeah. He's like every time I looked at Reese, he's like an an athlete, right? Yeah, like yeah, I'm like, yeah. it's kind of weird, like to have a Nike program without Reese, because yeah. like, you know what I mean, right? He yeah. looks like a Nike yeah. athlete, right? Even not even being on Nike. Yeah. So yeah, we kind of did it like that, and Nike wanted it to do like a real grassroots ap- uh, approach. Okay. Obviously, they had the technology to to make a crazy shoe right For sure. and they did at that time you know they had the the retro dunk but they also they were yeah. they had the eq and they had they were experimenting with some stuff yeah. but they made some crazy shoes for a while yeah like yeah. some really high tech like indestructible Full armor yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it was kind of cool though about nike it was like man they're always trying to figure out how they can make make a better shoe right of course, yeah so but then so it was kind of i think like a brain like huh skaters want to wear dunks but like you guys don't understand we can make anything a really good shoe for you guys right we don't want a better shoe yeah so then they're like okay so we'll take that retro shoe obviously that is aesthetically pleasant Mm -hmm. and we'll put a zoom air in there Mm. so there's like that 
there's comfort, right, yeah. right. a comfort in there. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was really cool. But then the dunk thing went off. Jeez, yeah, you guys yeah. saved a lot of space yeah. shops. It was crazy. But that was, I think, I think the dunk thing would have went off without. It was already think, without that the, sneaker yeah. phenomenon. I think, I don't know. I think That's that true. the skaters kind of help helped it even get bigger mm-hmm. but there was already like an underground sneaker scene yeah yeah, yeah well, it, we did, but you guys were the ones to make it like so the skate shops could get those shoes right so That's you guys true. they had the skate team so yeah you can, they can sell in skate shops it's like where do you get them you get them at skate shop that's why the sneaker heads like gravitate towards that stuff you know? yeah yeah so that was really cool yeah and then i mean it wasn't it was easy for me to say hey i'm gonna skate for nike because at that time 2002 I'm already pro for two years, and I'm on this heavy DVS squad, mm-hmm. right? Like, the team was stacked yeah, with some right. gnarly dudes. Jason Dill, Kerry oh, yeah. Getz, Steve Barra, Daywan, and, uh, you know, I'm now like, dude. Like one of five. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. dude, I could be a, I could be a, a one of five dudes yeah. on this team in, uh, for, for the next four years. There you go. And I was like, sick. And I, that's it was like kind of an easy thing for me to choose. Did you talk to Gavin? I actually talked to Kelly Bird at the time. Kelly Bird, yeah, oh, okay. Which who, who actually he works for Nike now? Right, yeah. <laughs> he was totally cool about Which it. I mean, hilarious, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kelly's awesome. Yeah, and so it was, you know, he understood. Yeah, but it was funny because at that time it was like, yeah, Nike's gonna do shoes, and I think no one really thought like, cool. But you know, not even myself knew it was gonna become what it has become. But it's cool, man. I mean, who's like. Who's rebuilding skate parks? Yeah. Like they redid the courthouse. Yeah, it's yeah. Amazing. like the things that they do for skateboarding. Like, like haters could hate, but I mean, they at the need end to of the rebuild day, Chafee. That that won't happen. But I think that would be cool. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. would be really cool. Yeah. Just because I know that Chafee School di- District. But um, mm-hmm. dude, they do a lot, yeah. man. And I really like I like their squad. I like how they have like. They kind of got all bases covered, dude. Yeah, they They're do. killing it. Yeah, they they different do. squads yeah. like all over the place. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? So at the time when you were getting on, you were kind of also thinking like, well, this is a roll of the dice, maybe. Like, I don't know how long yeah, this but is, the dice, people were saying yeah. that Nike, oh, Nike's whatever. Can they can they come in? Yeah, it was a roll of the dice, cause yeah. like, in a sense, though, but it wasn't like, it was a roll of the dice, but I didn't really care how it was going to turn yeah, out, okay. because I knew regardless, like, I was one of five dudes on a team for yeah, a while, right? and I felt like it was like a small exclusive thing, even if it was going to be like this small boutique initiative right Mm -hmm. like that was cool for me because again i just felt like i was buried on the dvs team Mm -hmm. by really gnarly dudes like which was awesome right but for me i was like man it'd be kind of cool to just end it this way because i you know you have to (laughs) i hate to say it that way but every every skateboarder like has to think future right and so i mean you know what was crazy about nike i mean obviously what you guys did in the beginning was awesome was a rad squad what changed the game was getting P Rod on the team, I feel like. When they got P Rod on, that was like the biggest deal to happen in skateboarding. And that was like the biggest kid going on in skateboarding. And that's when I feel like Nike kind of just really became skate. You yeah, know? I think that was cool. I think what they wanted to do was I I feel like they were able to get like a grassroots cool. like validation. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yep. yep. And then from the from that validation they were able to say, okay, because we we are we are Nike, we we want to be associated with the best, and Paul was the best. Like yeah. at the time, I think it was perfect. Yeah, yeah. of course. Right. And it was it was cool. Yeah, I mean he's killing it even to this day. I think he's been a great like he's representing good for that for for Nike. It fits him perfect. Guys had mm-hmm. like ten shoes. I know it's crazy. He's a yeah. true professional skateboarder. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's incredible. He's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> he's still amazing to this day, and he's a great yeah. guy. Yeah. Did you feel weird like all these people coming in, or did you kind of maybe felt like you were getting pushed out, or was it a was it a this was it a weird feeling, or did you just stick, I wanted think, to see it grow, or what, what, I think it's your... probably a combination of all that. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? As right. you get older, you start seeing like. This doesn't last forever. Did they ever try to pull you into the office? Who? Nike. No, you mean to work there? Yeah. No, no. no. I never maybe ex- like expressed interest to really want to work in skateboarding. Mm-hmm. I think that would have been like an easy default, right? Like, hey, mm-hmm. after skateboarding, I'm going to work in skateboarding. Right. right. But the reason why I kind of went the route I did was almost like a personal challenge. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, 
Does that make sense? Like, yeah, yeah. like can I do this? Yeah. Like, I don't have a college education. Like, so for me to kind of pursue a career that's totally non-related to skateboarding was yeah. another challenge for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's actually kind of how I fell into now doing, you know, selling real, real estate, estate for the last yeah. 12 years. Right, right. But, you know, at the same time, I don't really... I'm not like a, in real estate where like I dream about houses. No. Like I, 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 I'm in real estate because I don't know, watch house videos. I actually right? don't. I don't watch any of those. Yeah, but, um, watch cribs. I know how to do it and I know yeah. how to service people. There right. But um, it's not like I, I think about skateboarding more than I do real estate because I like, well, I, it's enjoyable. Right. But you know, it's a job. Yeah. That I didn't know how yeah. to do. Right. Good. You so, like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually pretty close to skateboarding. What do you mean? So, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. Yeah. <laughs> so what really leveraged like my ability to sell real estate mm-hmm. was I knew pretty much all of Southern California. Because you're driven around. Been around spot, spot. I've been spot. everywhere. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, like if you think about, like let's say my sister. Sh- okay. Like, hey, have you been to Los Feliz? No. No. Right? Like the average person does not travel the way skateboarders do. Yeah. So when it came to like selling real estate, like, like, I sell it all of Southern California. Yeah. Like, all of Southern California? For the most part. Like, I've oh. sold everything from, like, Woodland Hills to Yakaipa. Seriously? Oh, seriously. But it really helped because I knew I knew the Southern California landscape. Okay. Now, there's there's areas where, like, I won't... If it's not, like... If I'm not an expert in, then I won't sell there. But what helped me was just skateboarding. Yeah. Because I knew, for the most part, where things were, what cross streets were. I knew, you knew how... where all the schools were at. I knew what neighborhoods were like. <laughs> right. Yeah. This um, is a great school in this area. <laughs> yeah. That's so much a great school. bank to bench. No, yeah, right. Great bank, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but driving from spot to spot, like a, right. a real estate, someone in real estate is constantly driving. So, it feels the same. And also, just kind of like... Uh, just the feeling of being self-employed, right? How does that work, though? If you're you ha, you work for a company, yes. right? Yes. Now, if there's a house being put up for sale in Ukaipa, yeah, and there's a house being put up in Woodland Hills, uh-huh. how do you? How does that work? End up with that list. How do you work? Yeah, I mean, I, you would think that you would just kind of work your zone. Or no. just like a free you for all. With so it's all research based. No, no, no. Yeah. So how does it work? So when you when you when you sell a house, yeah. I don't know if this is interesting for skateboarders. I'm but interested. I, okay. yeah, I, I'm interested. So when you let's say I want to sell this this uh, this triplex mm-hmm. or there you go the triplex up the street, right? right. Um, um, you're gonna just do research. It's gonna be based on your. It's gonna be based on facts. It's not going to be based that like I'm five foot eight or, okay. you know, it's going to be based on what has recently sold in the last year that's comparable to this property. So you're going in looking at all the listings for. Yeah, I'll go in. Let's say I someone lives in Yakaipa and says, I want to sell my house, right? Yeah. I'll go in and I'll help them make an educated decision. But how decision. do they get a hold of you? Oh, that's how does that question. happen? When you first start off in the business, yeah, um, you have to solicit like, door-to-door type thing, business cards, yeah, so, whatever. So we're, we do a lot of door knocking. Okay. Um, you do a lot of uh, cold calling. You cold call people. Wow. Yeah, so right. when I was in... Oh, maybe you go... I know this has happened to my parents. Yeah. Like somebody will come in and yeah. be like, hey, we want to do an appraisal on your house. Yeah, that's like their their doorway in. Yeah. So your first, like my first two years as a real estate agent, I sold along with my... We did like 35 homes in two years. Like we were just kind of crazy, right? Wow. But a, like, is that the, good or is that? It's a lot. That's oh, a lot. Okay. Sounds average, like a lot. The average realtor sells like four homes a year. Oh. And the average realtor is also fifty six years old. Okay. So it was kind of like, like right now that I'm Hustling. close to forty, like it's it's I'm at a good age to sell real estate because mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not young, but I'm not old. It's just right there. But um, I feel like maybe the people that are the same age as you are are, are buying the houses too. Exactly. Yeah. But More I don't. Relatable. I'm not a salesman. I just educate. Right. Yeah. So back to like. But then you're a personable person to talk to. And, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But before you like, so now in my career, mm-hmm. I have a lot of what you call referrals and past clients. But they when say, you're oh, begin, when you're a beginner, yeah. you're like knock knock. Hi, Mr. Jones. I noticed that you tried to sell your house on the market for for the last three months. Do you still have a goal to sell your house? Right. I think I could do that. Right. Right. The thing with uh, anyone, anyone could do my job. I'm not going to say like, oh, no one could do this. But the thing that there's a lot of rejection in my job. Yeah. Uh, so if you have a lot of, if you're real self-conscious and you can't handle rejection, then, you know, someone saying, no, I don't need to. A lot of times people can internalize it and take it personal. Mm-hmm. And then when, 
when Roger wants to buy or sell, my mindset's like I'm a reject and I can't even talk to him right, there right? You go. Well, it's like okay. not landing a trick in skating, dude. It's like you So, thank you skateboarding. <laughs> skateboarding has conditioned me to be able to sell real estate because you fail so many times. Yep. It's it's strictly a numbers game. Just like Real, I'd say skateboarding is numbers, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Try X amount of times you're gonna land something, right? It's the same thing in what I do. So if I want to sell, say I live here, I want to sell this place, yeah, right, and I call up your company, yeah, right. How do they now? Do they? Is it for the person who picks up the phone, or how does? Yeah, how do you get a hold of my listing? Or is it just kind of a lottery thing? Like, oh, we'll put you through to uh, who's not on the phone, right? Oh, Richard's not on the. He's not busy. Let's let's hook him up with. How does that work? You know what I mean? Um, I'm just trying to understand. No, no, this you have thing. to find your own business, right? Well, you so, do. So, but what people call up your real estate, the company you work for, though, yeah. Right? So, wh- whoever, whatever agents there at the time to pick up the phone, they get the, they're going to get it. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. gotcha. But in real okay. estate, on when you're buying or selling a home, there's two people. In, there's two agents. There's the agent representing the seller, and there's the agent representing the buyer. buyer. Mm-hmm. Right. Ah, okay. Right, and then you're negotiating. So a buyer may call up and be like, I want to buy a house. And you'd be Correct. like, cool, let me see what area. Yes. And I'm going to look at the, uh, what, what's the website? Every, the MP or the, the MLS. The MLS listings. But nowadays it's like, um, just you, you have Zillow, you have all these oh, yeah. third party sites, right? Right. Like because of these reality shows, just like everyone's a skateboarder, yeah. yep. everyone's a real estate professional now. Right. So now I go into these appointments, like a seller will tell me, no, my home's not worth a million dollars. My home's worth 1.5 million. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'd like to be six feet tall too, but I'm only five six. <laughs> um, and it's because Zillow and these third party sites that are computer generated yeah. are telling them something based on a computer generated report yeah. where I know, well, there's a train track right by your house. Yeah. And right. your house is on a busy street. There's a dog park yeah. right next door. Right. Yeah. The, the computer is not analyzing that. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where humans are still worth something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's interesting, yeah. dude. It's in- it seems like a lot of work, bro. It, not, is. it just seems like it's a, it's a lot of footwork. It's a lot of homework. It's like it's a lot anything. of digging around. I yeah. think if people want to like skate like for a living, it's a lot like, of work, a lot of yeah. work, man. For like, sure. Look at Kelly's shins. I know. <laughs> yeah, like, things bulging. Yeah, yeah. Well, messed up. <laughs> but you enjoy it. It's nice. I enjoy it's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I actually do enjoy. It. I really okay. love. It's funny for me. Like I'll sell anything. Because for me, it's about, um, and I obviously like selling nice homes, but yeah, you I, sell a I, barn. for me, like my, uh, my why, I love helping people. So okay, yeah. I love it when people are stoked, like, wow, I, I understand it. So like, even like I've been able, I've been fortunate to help a lot of skaters out. Oh yeah. And so it's funny because we could speak in a, in a, in a vernacular or a language where like, it's so intimidating as, as realtors, like mm-hmm. talking about, but like being able to sit here with say Theotis Beasley, yeah. right? And actually, hey, this is what this means. Right. That feels really rewarding to me. So yeah. I know he's not like getting ripped off by someone who's right. like trying to, you know, rip him off because he's doing well for himself. There you go. How many skaters yeah. have you sold homes to? A lot, a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you ever oh. see people like, are people being like, are, are you Richard Mulder? Like, have ever people be surprised that like, you're like you're a real yeah, 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 yeah. Like you've had like a client or something like that. They're like, they're like, holy shit! I skate. love yeah. you in the chocolate yeah, tour. I, yeah. I do get that sometimes. It's pretty fun yeah. <laughs> because I'm like, man, how do they recognize me? I'm like right. forty pounds heavier, <laughs> and I have less hair. Yeah, but yeah, it's kind of it's. I don't know, it's fun. It's yeah. really cool. Wow. Yeah, have you, have especially ever, someone who's like super psyched on that '90s era, right? Oh yeah, yeah. it's kind of sure, cool for sure. Have you ever had a home that you like? We're trying to sell that had like a murder in it that you had to Whoa. explain to like the, yeah, the buyers. Yeah, she have. So really, Whoa. so they have to disclose all this yeah, stuff. So, yeah, so even a haunted if something's haunted, no. Haunted, I don't, I don't, not haunted. Yeah, haunted. Not haunted, not yeah. haunted. But murders, you have to disclose murders. So in Fontana, okay. Um, this is probably I've been selling real estate for like three years. I'm working with a buyer. She wants to buy this two story home in Fontana. Uh-huh. So we go to this house and the agent discloses, "Hey, this home, the father." It was a divorce. He he lost his his butt in Vegas. He wow. came home. He killed his daughter and killed himself. Wow! Vacant oh home. Gosh. Damn. My buyer. She was buying this for an investment. She didn't care. No. <laughs> she didn't care. She's like, cool. I'm just gonna rent it out anyways, right? Yeah. So it wasn't like she was gonna live in there. So she'd feel like weird vibes, okay. right? But um, you have to disclose that. You have, you have to. to disclose a death within three years. 
Oh, within three years. Yeah. Oh. Even any death, a heart attack, any natural death. causes. Any death. Because, yeah. Oh. Like, let's say after I hand you the keys and say, hey, by the way, Chris, someone had a stroke right there by the refrigerator. Yeah. That's kind of like ruin your vibe when you're eating your spaghetti and totally. you look in that part of the room knowing someone yeah. like yeah. had a traumatic event right, right there. Right. But, but even for her, though, now she has to, she's renting it out. She has to tell the other person, like, hey, someone died there. Well, it's a rental, though. I don't think she. You have to disclose to rent it? Um, do they have to do that with apartments, though? Yeah. I don't. If think I'm going to move into someone's murder, no, here. I don't think here? she had to yeah. disclose. Why? That. What? I don't know. Like I heard from neighbors that someone was murdered in our building. Oh, what? in your building? Yeah, they didn't oh. say which one, but I got to go. I'm yeah. just, I'm just finding <laughs> this see out. You guys now. Yeah. 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 It's in Kelly's room, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. That's scary. Like the more you disclose, the safer you are. Because right. right now in this day and age, everyone wants to sue someone. Of course. Yeah. Like, hey, man, he farted right over there. Yeah. <laughs> I knew the car. You, know, you don't want to stand over there. there. Yeah. <laughs> Not only that, I don't want to stand there, I'm no. going to sue his ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's called failure to disclose. Failure to disclose. I actually, <laughs> out of the 12 years I've been in real estate, I got my first. Someone actually tried to, to sue me. No. Yeah, sue me in my client. But they're not going to be able to sue me. I have it like when you're in real estate, you actually pay for insurance. And so yeah. I ha you're represented by an attorney. Okay. Yep. But they're trying to say that. Um, to, so they bought it as an investment property, meaning they want to rent it out. Yeah, they're going to rent it out. Right. Okay. And so they never lived in the property. Right? <laughs> right. And so this was well over almost three years ago. OK. Almost three old years news. Ago. Old news. Yeah. So they had a tenant in there for two years. This year, they discovered there was mold in one of the walls because there was a little leak. And they are saying that my my seller failed to disclose that there was mold in the wall. What, I could see through the fucking wall? Like, who right, was that? Right, So they they come and said, hey, listen, uh, you know, we want $80,000 from But you. don't you have an inspection before you even sell it? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then not only that, the, the, the buyer she was also an agent mm -hmm. like herself yeah. oh. but again it's disappointing you're seeing mold three years later right don't yeah. get me wrong it's disappointing and it's disappointing that you're gonna have to spend you know 50, 40 50 thousand to kind of rip well i think that's kind of exaggerating that's pretty to rip it all down right to rip yeah. it all but now you want to blame someone yeah because you didn't really read your inspections thoroughly there you go there and so yeah go. i mean part of my job is also to, is is again you want to read everything you want to read the fine print so deaths Anything else you need to disclose? Death, mold, yeah, cracks mold. in the foundation. Okay. Um, and then we're in SoCal, earthquake country. Yeah, yeah. Yep. If your home's built on a hillside. Oh, yeah. Um, mudslides and all yeah, that. Mud yeah, mudslides. Mm. Neighborhoods. Yeah. Like train tracks, noises. Don't so, you don't you work with a bunch of other skaters too? Yeah, man. I uh, so Ben Dan, Fisher. I, ben Fisher. Yeah. He doesn't work with me, but he works in the same office as okay. my, me. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny Montoya. Yeah. I mean, I don't work with him directly, but okay. he, he, he got in the business too. Yeah. Tim Gavin. Um, Tim Gavin yeah. got, just got in the business. Um, Scott Kane. Oh, Scott Kane. It was a pleasure to work with. Wow. He got in the business. I, I, he's not practicing right now, but okay. he, uh, I think he just had a kid, but rad dude. Love wow. Scott Kane. Oh, yeah. He's it was actually cool. an honor to work with Scott Kane and Sick. train him. Um, who else? Kevin Yon, I mean, he is he like? Does he own what was it? Kaiser is that what it's called? No, Case. So okay, oh, sorry. Yeah, I, don't I work know. For, yeah. So Case is our real estate team. So uh, we all work for a real estate company called Keller Williams. Oh, okay. It's a big company. You guys yeah. see it. So within Kel Will <clears throat> within Keller Williams, they allow you to. Uh, to franchise or make your own team. Oh, there you go. So if you're like, hey, I want the Chris Roberts team. Yeah. Like, like, um, let's. Does that make sense? But you're still right. on Keller team. Williams because you have to yeah. be under a broker. Okay. But they allow you to mar self market a team. Mm. Oh, okay. So I've known Kevin since uh, he was ten. I met Kevin at Chafee. Oh, like okay. me and him are like really good friends. Oh. But I've known him since he was a kid. Okay. And uh, it's so funny. You guys are gonna laugh how I got into real estate. So, again, so we're at like 2004, 2005. Mm -hmm. I'm like trying to figure it out. I just got engaged. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to get married right. here. And you can kind of see the writing on the wall. I already explained it. Like, hey, man, I'm tired of seeing myself do front side crooked grinds. <laughs> I'm just tired of my go-to tricks. Like, yeah, they, and okay. popped my arm out already six times. Oh, God. Ooh, wow. And every time I felt like I was getting good, like my arm would come out. Just mm. all these whatever. Yeah. And so... And then, uh, so I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm trying these odd jobs. Tried printing. Okay. Uh, it's printing. funny. Tried printing. Yeah. What actually like, uh, I'd go into cup, actually did some catalogs for Stussy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, Hey dude, like 
like my friend worked for a company called Europrint at the time, and he's like, hey, you want to try printing? It's the same thing. You get a commission off, okay. off something. So let's say I do a job for you. Right. You want like fifteen hundred catalogs. There you go. Yeah. You know, I'll make a commission off that job because that yeah. job's gonna be like whatever. Gotcha. A few thousand. Didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> just tried a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. and um, just didn't want to work in skateboarding. Didn't mm -hmm. want to work in the warehouse. Right. Um, Cause then there's also that ladder you got to climb, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I just bought a suit to go to a wedding. Oh. And I haven't seen Kevin. You know, who, we're talking about Kevin, who's real estate partner. Okay. Yep. In years, cause he was he was skated. He was on termite skateboards. He was a good wow, skater. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I saw him. We were. I, I was. I was living in Santa Ana at the time, okay. right by South Coast Plaza. He. It's so weird. He pulls up, and. And like he's driving this really nice car, and I'm like, dude, what are you doing nowadays? Yeah. He's like, I'm a realtor, or he's like, I'm in real estate. And I'm like, really? I'm like, dude, I just bought a suit. Like, I'll put on, <laughs> I go, I'll put on my suit and let's go to dinner. It's, it was actually randomly like that. Wow. And I kind of told him where I was at, and um, it was so cool because he was already working for, what, how old was I at this time? I was like 25. Oh. So he was probably already like 23, but since he was like 17, he was working for a real estate coaching company Whoa. so he knows how to i mean we used to play these games for like hey sell me like used coconut water right yeah, now okay so i'd like convince you why you need to buy this off me interesting so he he it's the art of sales yeah. right yeah so sell me um, this pen no right yeah. Yeah. no seriously yeah. we, we would have a joke like let's like convince me why i should buy this broken cd right this funny stuff but uh, he coached me on how to sell real estate hmm. so right around 2005 i think that's why we're the realtor richie um, the Realtor Richie board, right? Yeah, like yeah, that was yeah. my last that chocolate was your last board. Chocolate board. And it's kind of funny, like yeah, real estate for dummies. Because the reality is, like, I didn't know anything about real estate. No. But I did know that, like, I had bills, and I did know, like, I have, I don't. I'm. Um, how can you go from making good pro skating money mm -hmm. to now, like, I'm working at the warehouse? Like, you right. know, it's like yeah. you can't do that. Like, yeah. so I'm not going to regress here, and so I gave myself a learning curve. Like, hey, if I could just get paid for skateboarding still at the same time, learn a trade, like, mm -hmm. you know, fast track myself and learning a trade yeah. for the next six months to a year. Uh -huh. Then once that's gone, like I'm good. You're already in there. And actually that's how it turned out. Like wow. it was cool. It was like, I was able to then, I didn't need skateboarding money no more. Right. Which was awesome. Yeah. Right? But that's so hard because I feel like a lot of our identity is rooted in what we do. True. So there was still like a, a little bit of an identity crisis, yeah. right? Like, yeah. like, you know, you know and that then, balance yeah. of like skate and realtor. Right. Mm -hmm. And then even talking to people like about, oh, I'm a real estate agent. Like, like, is this guy serious? And then I'm like, am I even serious? <laughs> 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 you know, but I am serious, yeah. right? Yeah. So with anything, it just takes years. Yeah. Like I didn't really feel confident as a realtor. I'd say like confident, mm -hmm. you know, as until like three, four, five years. Now I've been in for 12 years. Oh, yeah. Very wow. confident, yeah. right? you know, right. but it's just not like, I can't just pick up and learn Photoshop or Illustrator. It takes time. It yeah. takes time, it takes right? Time, yeah. And so that's how, that's how I became a real estate agent. It's not like I, dreamt about it no. it's just a job that you put, on, you put on a suit and went to yeah. dinner and yeah. uh that was it yeah but i haven't worn a suit in <laughs> like three years now why because you just dress like i uh, just seriously just normal. said it's yeah. just it's funny you just uh it's almost like you're trying too hard if you've yeah. got a suit on yeah. and the whole yeah. thing and then you're trying to do the game like right. this house is uh, fabulous well, i, th I think know. now just because of the reality shows too i think suits could be so standoffish now yeah, yeah. yeah. so if i'm talking to you and you're wanting to purchase or sell and i'm right. wearing a suit yeah like it's a little intimidating mm -hmm. Unless you're 65 years old and... Depends who you're dealing with. Right. So yeah. it's the art of rapport, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no sale is ever possible unless rapport is first established, mm -hmm. right? You have to have rapport. You're not going nowhere. Yeah. So if you're 65 and you want to sell a house, you better believe I'm in a suit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm serious, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways. I think I could sell houses. I think you, know you I mean? can too. I think I could. Yeah. I'd love to see you try. I you know, I would, I, can no. I come with you? Can I do a ride along? Totally. And, uh, <laughs> oh, just try to. So yeah, even Tony Bursino is actually. Oh, is he, he doing that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's cool. Now let me ask you a question: With the the Richie the Realtor board, yeah. I mean Re Richie uh, Realtor Richie, did you go in there saying like, "Yo, guys, I think I'm done. I'm going to do this real estate thing. I don't want to maybe make any more boards. I, I kind of want to retire." You know what's funny? I think it was just like all. It was like nonverbal. No, really? I yeah, I'd say that. I think like 
They saw the writing on the wall. Yeah, lot. they saw it. I was feeling it. Like I would. And you see, were already doing this real estate thing, kind of. Yeah, and I think that like I even went into Megan's office. Like, hey, thank you. Once once I saw, I think one catalog where my board wasn't in it, mm-hmm. and actually that was the last board I went and said, hey, thank you so much for okay. like just giving me this opportunity yeah. to go to skate for you guys for so long. Okay. I even when I go into Girl and Chocolate now. Like I am always thanking them yeah. because like who sponsors someone for this long? Yeah. I mean, nowadays, like people just like, I'm not saying now, but even. No, you're like, back. No, but if you're doing no, the no, board coming out, you're back. Like that. <laughs> no, you're <laughs> back. <laughs> but even from 2006 yeah. to 1994, what is time. that? 12 years? Yeah. Who skates for someone for 12 years? Like, I mean, that's unheard of nowadays, Steve right? Steve Caballero. Right, right. Well, I'm super age. thankful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, nothing happened. Super yeah, thankful. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I will always be forever grateful for anyone who's ever supported my skateboarding yeah. because it's it's really leveraged me into, like, what I do nowadays. Right. Hey, Seriously, it's cool. Yeah, real estate, dude. It's good. You're having fun doing it and everything, huh? Yeah, man. It's uh, it's fun helping people. I love that. And I love that. I really love helping skaters mm-hmm. or even people in that work in in the industry yeah just because it's just like just educating people on making right choices even though sometimes they won't listen to you there's only so much you could do there's only so much you could do right but you're still skating right you skate um you skate often right i mean you just you just came out with like a little video thing like once a week i try to skate with one of my with some friends okay like we'll go out actually friday nights we'll go out and skate Oh, yeah. And whatever it might be, Friday nights or a Saturday. What what spots do you think? Do you, is it random or do you guys have like a local spot? It's random. Like Stussy has a mini ramp. Oh, they so built like like, w- like this year. Okay. Or we'll skate. Just actually, our spots are like pretty nineties. Like yeah. We'll just find like a, a schoolyard with with like a ledge curb in front or. Perfect. Um. Yeah, man. Okay. We're not jumping like a Lockwood fence to go skate. You know. <laughs> no, but, um, no. 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 But yeah, we're just just trying to break a sweat and just. Just skating because we love skateboarding, yeah. right? But not trying to like, you know, blast it on Instagram. And you I just, should. I you just, should post some Instagram clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not like, I'm not skating with the intention of like posting it on Instagram <laughs> yeah, though, course. right? You yeah, know right. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You were filming a little part, right? No, no, not a part. No. So, so this, even this thing with Active, yeah. like because I skated from them, for them from like, you know, 96 till around early excuse me, 2000s, okay. I had an idea, like, let's do a timeline of footage from, like, actually, we're going to show some clips from, like, 94, oh. like, 94, 96, 90, and then, like, and then it'll go to, like, early 2000s. Okay. And then I'll have, like, a recent thing recent writing, stuff. you know, this this oh. reissue so board. So this is going to be one video. Are they going to, or are they going to release it in little uh, no, sections? No, no, yeah, this is just more like um. Like a just, little timeline video. It, no, it's just a little tiny caps for, to just to kind of show just the to capsule. Go with the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's not a video part. Like, it's not going to be on Hella Clips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it will. It's actually, your best of. So, but um, what camera are you film with? Like a, do you film with like a, I don't know, DSLR or something. Dude, like Dude, we're filming with whatever. Like my iPhone right here. Yeah. yeah. And then my friend has a GoPro. Oh. My friend Chuck has a okay. GoPro, and Thomas, I think he has some, uh, like you know, iPhone, the way to hold it, but we, it, like, we don't care. Yeah. Like, we don't even care about quality. We're just like, it's just fun. Do, do we know the exact date when this, these boards are dropping and everything? The 15th, this is of, the uh, 15th of November? Yeah. A couple days. Yeah. It's coming out in a couple so two days. days. Yeah. 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 Are you so excited? Cool. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked, man. I mean, they wanted to do it. It was like an idea that Joey Coleman from Active had. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of cool that like Jamie and the guys that girl and chocolate were like stoked on. Yeah. So to see, it's kind of weird. Like, wow. And the fact that it came out the same time as the, uh, the dunk, the 15 year, the dunk. I was going to say, was that? No, it all wasn't. Pl- it was just a random no, coincidence. It's a random coincidence. So it's kind of, oh. it's kind of funny. Like this is the most I've been around. Like, like skateboarding in a sense, yeah, you know, like yeah. it's kind of weird, like you know? Years. Yeah. You're <laughs> like pro, a, you're pro again, dude. I know. No, no, but it's actually been really, <laughs> it's fun kind of being, like not in like you know the when you when, you when you're a pro you have to kind of go get coverage right so yeah. you have to go be in the limelight right yeah. it's really nice to just kind of live a, a quiet and peaceable life yeah right. <laughs> no, I'm, no I'm, I'm serious like it's just i really enjoy just kind of what i do i i enjoy how i live my life and um but then now doing this with the dunk and this mm-hmm. it's like it's cool too it's awesome but you know it's 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 really cool that it's like a tribute to 
a time. It's not like, hey, some resurrection of something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. true. No, yeah, I got yeah. you. I got you. I watch soccer, okay? I've mm-hmm. been watching it pretty gnarly, like I said, for four years. Okay. Dude, your bodies get beat, right? And now I think about, like, as I'm talking right now, like, yeah. I have a neck pain. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, like, I have neck pain. I, I feel pain in my body. Okay. It's like, I'm getting older, right? Right, right. So, like, it's I funny. I leave sponsor. Yeah. I have so much respect for, like, these guys who are skating still. Yeah. Like, like... Like I, I think I, Ed Templeton, Andrew Andrew Reynolds, right? Dude. Like, oh yeah! Oh my gosh! Like mm-hmm. these guys are like in like Eric Costin, Mariano, all these guys. I'm like, dude, these guys are animals, dude. It's crazy, right? All yeah, right. It's yeah. like, but at the same time, it's like everyone has their lot in life, right? So like, I don't. When I look back, like, could I have milked it a couple more years? I don't know. I'm actually really stoked on the decisions that I made at the time. Cool. Because I like where I'm at right now. There you go. Does that make sense? Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. After chocolate, and you kind of departed from chocolate, you kind of wrote for soy for a minute. Yeah. You know what? That was more like a um a homie thing. A homie thing. Yeah. Hmm. I love Christian. He's a good yeah. friend of mine. Like right. when he got out of like obviously I knew him when I wrote for Milk. Okay. Yep. And then when he got out of prison, we ran into each other at an event, and we just been friends. Like, mm-hmm. like. So I mean I don't I I don't skate like Chris we don't skate together right right actually he'll try to go out and learn three sixty flips here and there right That's like rad. he's a rad dude he yeah. loves he's a skate rat Christian yeah. loves skateboarding mm-hmm. but um yeah it was just more like a fun thing you know did you have a board on his I did oh, I, you did yeah but oh. it's like I don't know how where the company was at that time okay. where it was like Hasoy yeah but um it was cool sick yeah wow. i had a I, mean, I do a small brand called heel bruise yeah 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 yeah, yes. yeah. Right. so right and so at the, like we, i would use one of my our heel we'd use one of our heel bruise graphics on one of my boards it was pretty okay. fun yeah. sick what, what, what's going on with heel bruise now are you guys bringing it back because it, it was kind of gone for a little yeah, bit yeah, no? yeah. Did so, you guys kind of take a break yeah me and my friend thomas you grew mm-hmm. up grew up uh skating with we yeah. just uh it's just a brand that we started in 2009. It's a great just name. Just for fun. No, yeah. it's fun. Heel bruise, yeah. And it's not to be taken literal. Like, literally, like, we. Th- I thought of it actually when I was working. Well, there was a time where I actually worked for Merrill Lynch. Like, okay. Actually, so I sold real estate for, I think, five, four or five years, mm-hmm. no, four years. And then I, I worked at Merrill Lynch as a financial advisor. Like, I got recruited because of the amount of homes I sold in a short amount of time. Oh. Like, they said, hey, do you want to come work in the financial industry? So I went and got my Series 7. I got my Series 66, and I started selling like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, all that stuff. Really? I hated it because no. this is right when the mar- the stock market. You guys all know yeah. when the recession happened, yeah. right? Yeah. I I couldn't sell it worth nothing. Like when you when you work in real estate, I'm not selling. I'm helping. Like like you need my service, whether right. There but when go. it comes to like an investment, I couldn't really. Even though I myself invest money, mm-hmm. like I couldn't sell it because I couldn't, I didn't have the conviction behind it. I couldn't sell it. Okay. Long yeah. story short, I couldn't sell, I couldn't sell stocks and, right. and all that yeah. stuff. Uh-huh. So I went back into selling real estate. While I was working at Merrill Lynch, I was like, I was driving. And I was like, heel bruise. It just came to my mind. Yeah. I, I always liked company names that were like two names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Powell Peralta. Okay. Yep. Toy Machine. I've always thought yeah. two name companies were like cool. And then my friend Thomas, I was like, he was already like drawing stuff, worked at companies. And uh-huh. I was like, hey, let's do a small little brand. Okay. So we've done it. We've always been just Thomas us. Thomas worked at Stussy, right? What's that? Thomas worked at Stussy. Thomas right worked at Stussy. Yeah. Thomas worked at DVS before Stussy. Yeah. And um, yeah, he's he's super amazing, talented. Yeah. And But we just make stuff that we like, right? Okay. But um, we're just kind of recycling this um, small amount of money. But, you know, once you kind of get in, you get bigger, now you're competing with guys with a lot of money and you can't really compete because like then people want to do buybacks oh. and, and then you make what you, know, you guys all know if you're a small brand, and you make one mistake. Yeah. You're going to hang. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you order like, like just, uh, let's say you make jackets and only 50% sell through. Right. Right. And then you're promoing the other 25% and then you have to sell the other 25% on sale. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. You are yeah. chilling on top ramen. Yeah. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? But the good thing is like while I was doing Hilbers, I still like stole houses. I just wasn't full time. Gotcha. Like, but, um, so we were like, you know, we can't do this. Yeah. I started getting talked about anxiety, started okay. freaking losing it. Like, like 
tripping out like what am i doing so we kind of f- trying to figure it out okay. just recently we got approached by a licensee oh, cool. this year oh, like no. hey we like what you guys are doing like we want to you know we want to do your online store so they do everything all we have to do is kind of design just come up with the ideas yeah but we're not oh. even like season to season like you know a machine okay like we were trying to compete like but we just couldn't do it and yeah. we couldn't really compete with like the buyback or what like you know when you'd sell to a company and like or a shop a big shop big shop no names yeah. no big names. shops right. <laughs> and they want it at Everyone a deep discount and then not only that they want you to buy your product back for what doesn't sell crazy it's like dude yeah yeah i can't when do that's why you can't do it so then that's where we were kind of like away for that long okay like this is crazy, man. I'm working yeah. this hard for this amount of money, like this amount of negative money. There you <laughs> go. Yeah, right. You know so, it is for the right? love. Yeah. Hey, no, Plus you got the kids. You yeah. got the whole thing. You got the. Yeah. Fan. It's a lot. So right. after five years, we're like, "What am I doing this? I don't need any cool guy points from nobody." Yeah. Like I'm a grown man. Like yeah. what? And like, is this making <laughs> sense? But then after we turn it off a little bit, people are like, "Oh, where's Hill Brews? It looked like you were killing it." Well, perception is reality, right? There yeah. you go. So. But then it you know, did look like you were killing. Yeah, it, it looked That's, like you were killing. Yeah, but I was yeah. killing That's, myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Like trying to kill it. Yeah. And so, um, you know, but people liked it. So now we're back. We were just kind of just. We're it's available. It's available. And if it okay. grows bigger, it does. But we're not like. We're not trying to to f- contry like force it. Does that yeah. make no, does that make yeah. sense? Totally like organic. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's where we have at. to do. But that. we enjoy yeah. it. We love it. It's fun. Sick. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, speaking of product, man, listen, I got a gift for you. <laughs> okay. Got a gift for you. He went to the Nine Club store before we came in here. Oh. He just went shopping at the Nine Club store, which is in Roger's living room. <laughs> he got you a, a Apple Yard mug. Oh, wow. Nine Club Apple Yard mug. Hope you're a fan of Apple Yard. Yeah, I am. But a fan wait, of Apple there's Yard. more. Nine Club unstructured hat. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Dad hat. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not Can't really dad. Well, the dad hats have the, yeah, yeah. the brim. Really nice. Thanks, Chris. Dude. Thanks, Roger. For sure. Kelly? Kelly has nothing to do with it. <laughs> I have nothing to do with uh, anything here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He but goes there you go, thing, yeah. dude. Yeah. Richard Mulder, bro. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah dude. Gosh, I feel special. Dude, you should. You are, yeah. dude. Thanks. Yeah, man. You did rats. Guess. You're rats. You did rats stuff for skateboarding. Dude. I appreciate yeah. that. And you still do, actually. You got new boards coming out. The shoes. I know. Richie's back, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> He's back. I love it. No, if you live in Southern California, go about active and buy his board. Hey, you got two days. It's a great board. No. Did they release it with any active logos or it's just straight up chocolate board? No, it's cool because so it's just a straight up chocolate okay. board. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I mean I like that. If you guys <clears throat> Yeah, so I think you're gonna have to if they want that board, they're gonna have to buy it off of active. Off of active. Mm-hmm. It's okay. gonna be exclusively in their stores, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So Do you know how many stores active has now? <sighs> I think like thirty. I don't know. Wow. 30, 25. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much no, for stopping by. You guys are doing cool. It's funny how like people are just like, I run into a lot of guys like, man, I watch every every episode. I try oh, really? to listen to yeah. a lot of them. Like I said, I really enjoyed Andrews, Reynolds. Yeah, Andrew Reynolds, yeah. I enjoyed Sal's, yeah. um, just with the kids and everything. You I watch just, Steve Olson's. Steve Olson's? Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Oh, oh watch, you watch, watch Steve Olson's. And I'm like halfway through BAMs right now. BAMs, yeah. yeah. And it is pretty funny. It's, oh, hilarious. yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty funny, so... Yeah. Hey, we just try to have fun, dude. Yeah. We just try to have fun and, uh, you know, wrap out. Talk about stuff, you know? <laughs> it's a show that I has... I watch Geno's too, actually. Oh, yeah? I really like Geno's, yeah. 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 It's yeah. a show that has skaters talking. Oh, thanks. You know, that's a tagline. Do you ever think one day you'll be sitting at a table talking to Chris Roberts? No, it's kind of like... It's weird. It's kind of weird little... right now. But, um, <laughs> but you know what? You have that, like... You have that AM radio meets Tinder voice. <laughs> oh, no, I'm playing. I'm okay. playing like that. Like, no, that's, that's a good. Amazing. That's like, a that good. Uh, I like that. You have a good voice. Thanks, that could dude. do this. Thank like, you, I bro. was always. I don't like my voice. I, no, I don't like mine either. Like, I. Nobody likes their own voice. I hate mine. I. Yeah, yeah, everyone, I everyone hates mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You even get into Stussy. Tell us about Stussy. No, so Stussy came about in two, uh, 1998. Mm-hmm. Okay. I yeah. mean, 1998, 1999, like right, right, right around like uh, the hot chocolate tour. And yeah. they they blew up. Yeah. So they, uh, it's interesting. They they wanted to to be a part of skateboarding. I feel like they've always had their foot in skateboarding. Well, they were, it, it, culturally, yeah, like yeah. I think people who wear it skated, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And it, even in the 80s, but then they mm-hmm. wanted a team. 
So it was the team was myself, uh, Keith, Scott, uh, even Danny Super was on for a split second. Mm-hmm. Ave was on for a split second, and um, Danny Montoya. Wow. And then Chad Tim Tim, and then yeah. even Justin Reynolds was on f- yep. for a little bit. As it grew, I don't think Stussy, which is a mom and pop brand to this day, they mm-hmm. were like, "Wow, dude, this budget's kind of gnarly, right?" Mm-hmm. So let's say you kind of like, you, you know, and I, I don't know. I, we were just going on these crazy trips and I don't even know if they knew that they didn't have to do these crazy trips, right? Like Mm -hmm. skaters were already used to like motel six and stuff. Right. But we would kind of go like where Stussy would go like on the trips. Right. So we're like tripping out. Like we're staying at like St. Martin's lane in London and just really nice hotels. Like we do these really nice trips and some fun videos. Yeah. But I think as the budget kind of ran away, they were like, we got to clip this. I'm pro- probably just like any other skate team that was and is gone now, right? Oh, okay. Um, but as of recently, so I was on them. I was skating for them for kind of a long time, from like 2000, from 1998, I think, to 2006. Like, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it was always cool. Like, they were almost like, it's a family brand. So I yeah. would go in there. It, it wasn't always just about clothing. Good okay. people run that place. And then um, just as of two years ago, like I would go in there just, just you know say what's, up. say what's up. But they wanted to put a team together. I was kind of helping them put pieces together. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they you know, we put you know, we have Jared Sherbert, you know, helping out. He's the two C T manager. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. And uh, you know, we got Kevin Turpinin, Lance Mountain, who Sick. was actually originally on. Okay. And then we have like uh, a couple of AMs. We have uh Caleb from hockey. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, he's he's amazing. He, that, yeah. that video Aaron, part was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Aaron from uh, 917. Max, he's like on Chocolate Flow. Oh, okay. Jesse Alba. Jesse Alba, yeah. Yeah, who's actually, that's who I was thinking of yeah. the yeah. whole time. He's like one of my favorite. I love Jesse. He's just doing his like own yeah. thing. Yeah. Rad dude. But it's cool. So what the goal is like, let's kind of try to keep this low budge. Not low budge, but like, let's, let's not try to make this, let's make this long term. So their whole goal is they want to stay in long term. Mm-hmm. We all want to have a long-term goal, but like try- sustainable. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You know how budgets could be. Yeah. We all know. Yeah. We Don't all- blow your load. Yeah. So that's where it's at. It's cool, man. Sick. It's super cool. Well, dude, I'm stoked that everything's work. Um, everything's happening. The 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 reissues, the Nikes, the, the real estate. That was so interesting, dude. Because I've all I, I I know nothing about it. You know, it's interesting yeah, to it's, learn all that stuff. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Trying. Can you We're find all us trying. a studio space? What's that? Can you find us a studio space? Oh, yeah. yeah, we'll talk about that off off air. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Can't take it out of here, man. This is like, or yeah, at least find Roger and Kelly a new place to live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah.